The following program is a collection of stooges talking about happenings in the sports world. It is meant to be comedic informative. The opinions expressed on this show do not necessarily reflect the beliefs of their peers, their boss, or ESPN. There may be some cuss words because that's how humans in the real world talk. If you are young, please seek permission before watching any further. Hey! Why? Let's go! This show stinks, and the fact that you listen, we are very, very thankful for it. Ah! The all-time leading tackler for the Green Bay Packers, you pay! Damn it! Be a friend, tell a friend something nice could change their life. Hello, beautiful people! And welcome to our winter wonderland, the Thunderdome, on this Feel Good Friday, December 22nd, 2023. This sports program starts now. Football! Happened last night in a big way as the Los Angeles Rams covered against the New Orleans Saints when 91% of the public money was a winner. Mm -hmm. And the snow might have stopped, but the season is still very much in time Woo. because just three days from now we'll be celebrating celebrating Christmas. What? We'll be celebrating NFL football. Right. We'll be celebrating a football weekend that we've been looking forward to all damn year. We'll Woo. obviously break down the Saints and Rams game, which was you know, a great indicator that maybe the Rams are a wagon. Uh -oh. and not all 7-7 seven and seven teams are built the same. And not all 7-7 seven and seven organizations are headed in the same direction. And what the hell's going on with Dennis Allen and the New Orleans Saints? Jeez. I don't know if you saw the internet last night. They want him been gone. And Ooh. especially on a Thursday night football primetime game, it got loud. And on the flip side, the Los Angeles Rams have some special stories brewing. Yeah. Now all eyes are on the Rams and Lions potentially in a wild card matchup their first weekend of the playoffs in Detroit. But Matt Stafford talked about that last night. So we still got two games. That's a lot of football. Mm -hmm. Now ESPN Analytics give the Rams a 78% chance of making a playoff. Whoa which is an incredible story with where they were at the beginning of the season, what people thought their season was going to be. Remember, this is just, who's on the defense? Aaron Donald. Who's on the defense? Ah. Uh, 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 <laughs> ah. Who's on the offense? We got Matthew Stafford. Mm -hmm. You got Cooper Cup. Yep, right. Okay, that's going to be awesome. Mm -hmm. How about that offensive line that was absolute uh, crap uh, last year? Uh, They're going to do that. We don't know. <laughs> who, who, you got a, a, a rookie wide receiver out of BY? What? Oh, What's right. that? Puka Nakua? That guy's going to stink. What do you expect out of that guy? That was the beginning of the season. Yep. Don't look now. Puka Nakua is like the greatest receiver in the Super Bowl era. Yeah. He has records that are, are better than Randy Moss. More 150-yard games this season than Randy Moss had in 1990-whatever, whenever he was at his absolute best with the Vikings. And then you talk about a rookie campaign, maybe the greatest of all time. They've hit on a lot of pieces. Yeah. And they have their pillars, their OGs playing great football. I don't like him against the Niners. I don't like anybody against the Niners. Of course, sir. But why not the Rams? I think Matthew oh, Stafford's boy. thinking the same exact thing. We're excited to chat about that today. Got a lot of great guests. Michael Lombardi will join us. Ooh. Jet Passon will join us because there was big baseball news last night that we certainly will address here in a matter of moments. And then Chris Long, obviously multiple-time Super Bowl champion, host of the Greenlight Pod, mm -hmm. will join us in the third hour. A.J. Hawk will be here. The Toxic Table is here at Boston Connor. That's a sick shirt, dude. Yeah, thank you. I figured dog just because everyone loves dogs, and it feels as though one of those things just like Christmas, uh, receiving gifts everyone loves, and also so, you know, we were kind of looking through the history books today, and it happens that the Indiana Pacers broke a 28-game losing streak on the road in the NBA. And, you know, we were just kind of messing around. But, you know, Pistons are, are right You're there. talking about 1983 on December 22nd, Bingo. 1983. Yes, sir. Yeah, that, that is what we were looking mm -hmm. at. Not everybody was there whenever we were doing that. So. Yeah, yeah, that was terrible. Uh, but, you know, <laughs> here we are. It's too late. Yeah. So, But the Pacers on this date. <laughs> mm-hmm. In 1983, I believe? Sure. Yeah, I, for, I forgot the date. That's why I didn't bring it up. I just know it happened today at some point in the past. They were probably they, dogs. They lost 28 straight, uh -huh. and they broke the streak on this particular day. And the Detroit Pistons said, don't look now. 28 is going to be nothing. The Utah Jazz aren't going to play any of their players. They've lost now how many in a row? 25 in a row? Highest paid coach in the NBA up there. Hilarious. Detroit just continues Money. to Detroit. Good news that the Lions are good, so nobody even cares about what's happening with the Pistons. Yep. And, you know, normally football takes the – the topic of conversation on this particular program. Mm -hmm. But Boston Connors compadre there at the toxic table last night found himself trending in Tokyo, New York City, 
and Los Angeles. Big Whoa. Cities, big cities. All at the same exact time. We had a nice office Christmas party last night. It was so great. fun. A lot of fun. A lot of fun. Great time. It was great to see everybody. Yeah. You know, got out, did it at a place so we didn't have to really do much. Tone the was wife, there. the wife decorated and oh, did all. Yeah, right. Tone came. Tone was Tone's, uh, Tone's fam came. I mean, it was great to see everybody. Work mandated event, so mm -hmm. obviously the whole crew was there. A lot of significant others. People. It was great. Yeah. It was a great time. So much fun. And obviously, a lot of us here. You know, we've blossomed into still a small business, but more people and families are growing and everything like that. So, not everybody was sitting right next to everybody all the time. So, there were some things that happened during the Christmas party that maybe didn't make its way to the other end of the table for I don't know, 15, 20, 30 minutes or so. Sure. I happen to be the person that was on the other end of the table of your friend Ty Schmidt. There. Mm -hmm. So I see Ty at the other end of the table. We do a cheers. Jack and Diet, I believe, or Jack and Coke. Mm -hmm. This is standard operating procedure. That's right. And I go, hey, Merry Christmas, Ty, you know? And he's going to stop drinking that, remember? Yep. 2024. That's yeah. Right. So we only got a few days well, left not for Ty. Stop, not stopping, just being a little bit more responsible. Okay, weekdays. of course. No, he's got no a daughter now yeah, and everything. Exactly. No weekdays. Yeah, so Ty, as soon as he sits down at this party, you know, hey, how you doing? All right, we make, uh, I Jack and Diet, I drink about a sip of mine. Sure. Ty makes his disappear. Mm -hmm. Impressively. Yeah. Phenomenal. Yeah, it's unbelievable. I laugh, obviously, hysterically, that that is how he wanted to start the entire thing, but that is awesome for the entire office. Yeah, he was sitting next to Bill. Yeah, so exactly. <laughs> yeah. Shout out to Bill, by the way. Birthday, his lady had at the mm -hmm. same time, so it yep. was a birthday song that came across him, but Christmas party, it was all <laughs> it was all fantastic. So I see the waiter come back, okay, and I'm not, I can't hear a conversation that Ty's doing because he's on the other side. Mm -hmm. I'm a, I see another one go down. <laughs> Ty makes that thing disappear as well. Okay, waiter, hey. still there, still hey. there, waiter. All right, we're going to need another. Yeah. Okay, here we go. We actually don't have, we have to go get another bottle, sir. You know, that's what happened. Yeah, hurry up. So Ty had three, four drinks quickly as soon as he got there, having fun. Mm -hmm. I see a lot of laughing, a lot of commotion at the end of the table. Living. He's sitting right next to Bruce Brown. Okay, Bruce Brown, New York Yankees fan. Mm -hmm. So word makes its way down like telephone down at the end of the table to me. And they go, have you seen the breaking news? And I said, I have not. And he goes, Ty broke some news. And I look at Ty. I go, you broke news? And he goes, <laughs> okay, that was the face. Uh -huh. that, was, that, was the, that was the face he made. I would have, yep, there, there it is. is. <laughs> hey, there, is the, there is the face that was made. And look at the Grinch right over his left shoulder. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Perfect, very artsy. That was 5X Zoom on the iPhone, the new one. Hmm. I, do the, I do believe the camera has oh, been it's amazing. updated a little bit. Mm -hmm. Now, they're worth a few trillion. I wish we could get some other things, but the photo was certainly one of them. And I, I didn't know what news he broke, okay, at that point when I took that photo. So then I go to the internet. This is what Ty had tweeted at the beginning of the Christmas party last night. Hearing from very reliable sources that Yamamoto to the Yankees is done. Nine years, 326 million, being told Godzilla Matsui helped push it over the goal line. Yoshi keeps the number 18 jersey. Yeah! Okay? So by the time I saw this, it had 750,000, 15, 20 minutes, 750,000 views. I think it was up to like 800 quote tweets. And what Johnny Lasagna was saying in the one quote tweet, 209,000 followers and associated with the Pat McAfee show. We're on ESPN every day. Uh -huh. So 209,000 <laughs> followers and associated with our show. Johnny Lasagna is like, we got one. Let's go. We got one. He wasn't the only one. Bronx Bomber Ball. They're like, your legacy's on the line here, Ty. Mm -hmm. There was a lot of reaction, a lot of hope, a lot of dream from the Yankees fans. Yeah. By the time I saw it, it was, it was way gone. Yep. And I go, Ty, what, what's going on here? Hey, uh, what? Then as the night goes on, it continues to grow. Mm -hmm. It continues to grow. What? It continues to grow. What? All the way to Ty getting community noted Ooh. by Jet Passing. Yeah. Mm. Ladies and gentlemen, after two and a half million people, we'll say at the time, had saw Ty's tweet, it went down. Yoshinobu Yamamoto signed a 12-year, $325 million contract with the Los Angeles Dodgers. Oh, no. Which then caused an onslaught to Ty Schmidt as well. Yep. There was people not happy with Ty in his reporting. Jimmy Lombardi, Jimmy Lombo says, this is what happens if you hire podcasters to be journalists on ESPN. <laughs> sure. Nobody hired us to be journalists, Lombo, but we understand right. what you're saying. And also, this guy did shard his pants literally on air mm -hmm. last week. Mm -hmm. Avery Zaretsky says, I don't know who this guy is, but he should go to prison. 
Whoa. Okay? Prison was very nice of Avery to say. Yep. Because there was other people saying that you need to walk into traffic or off a bridge. Yeah, public executions. A lot of that type of stuff. <laughs> so, Ty, I didn't get the full story last night at the office Christmas party where we had the white elephant and a lot of commotion mm -hmm. and family and, uh, you know, good times. Uh, but this news broke after we yep. all had separated from each other. Correct. How did we get to where we are right now with you, Ty? And what is your life like right now as a man who tried to dabble in the baseball breaking news world? Well, I think a very important uh, thing to keep in mind uh, is I'm a diehard Yankees fan. Okay. First and foremost. So this isn't me just trying to cast bait out there, you know, pull a, pull a quick one. I mean, I woke up this morning just like all these people who are telling me to kill myself, jump off a bridge, et cetera, et cetera, get publicly executed. I woke up feeling just like you did, okay? I was expecting this guy to be donning pinstripes today. So, yeah, we're sitting at the end of the table, um, and a lot of people are saying, Hope, Hope Bruce isn't your source. Now, it's kind of twofold. No, Bruce is not my source, but Bruce, former king of New York City. Okay? We forgot about that. True. Yeah. I didn't explain that whenever I said it, Bruce was sitting there. Exactly. Seat. So, Bruce lived in New, in New York, was a Yankee season ticket holder, uh, has broken bread with the Steinbrenner, uh, Steinbrenner family yeah. who owns the Yankees. Has he really? Oh, yeah. What? Exactly. He also has a couple of uh, very well-placed sources. Uh, we won't necessarily say within the organization, but to borrow from Tom Curran, uh, we'll say people who were in the know at the time. Okay. Okay, so hey. so you get this information, and again, maybe that's why the uh, the booze cocktails were going down pretty quick, because I get, I get excited very quickly. Very quickly. Yeah, the motors, yeah. This is what I've wanted Done. Uh, for the for I don't know how long now. Basically, when they said this guy was coming to America, Yankees got to get this guy. Okay, got to go back to being the evil empire. Need to sign this guy, no matter what the cost. Like September, exactly. Yeah, and right around Christmas, I'm saying, oh, what well, you know? Wouldn't this be a nice little thing to have under my Christmas tree come Christmas morning? So should I have you know maybe? Reached out a little bit, dug around, you know, kind of tried to corroborate this in, in any way I could. Maybe, but like you said, got a couple cocktails in you, okay? That baseball <laughs> comes down the pike looking like a beach ball. And I just said, you know what? Screw it. Let's put this thing out. We were just talking about on Wednesday, you know? Hey, sometimes you got to put things out into the universe, yep. okay, in order for, for maybe them to come back positively. So you heard you. this news from your source, Bruce. Bruce, by way of a, a couple, by way. by way of a couple other people who were in, in the, the know, know at, at the, the time. time, and it did come out immediately after your tweet. The Yankees have put in yep. a massive offer, bingo, for Yamamoto. Exactly, exactly. knew knew they were right there. Um, but yeah, it was it was one of those things where it's you know I I should have known because he was in L A. Uh, already. They were talking about him going to. The football game with, uh, oh, uh, with Shoham uh, Anthony. Anthony. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> as, Herb, as, Herbie. How'd Herbie miss that? I don't know. Herbie He's loves baseball. baseball. Guy, yeah. He yeah. loves baseball. He Maybe he got so zeked up because yeah. Shohei Otani was there. He could have been. Uh, but yeah, so you you know, and then and then all these other reports are coming out, like you like you mentioned, hey, the Yankees have made a significant offer. Okay, yeah, the, the Dodgers are still out there. We understand that, but they brought in Godzilla Matsui, okay, who is one of the greatest Japanese baseball players of all time. And I'm, I'm thinking the entire night, hey, I'm right on the money here. You're okay? celebrating. I'm celebrating. Yeah. Hard. Yamamoto's a Yankee. This is unbelievable. They're, they're back, baby. Okay. War, World Series. I mean, don't even need to play the season next year. And then obviously, yeah, you know, I get home and um, my heart's broken because uh, once again, I am a Yankees fan. Okay. Was I duped? Uh, was I misled? Possibly. By who? By these very reliable sources, who you know, a lot of people are questioning those sources. Are they reliable? I still believe they're they're very reliable. Okay. Really, they're wrong. This is Pete Thamel staring down the pike of uh, it, yeah. ex exactly, yeah, exactly. I mean, yeah, granted. I mean, you were trending in three cities around the world. Team was wrong. Years were wrong. Money kind of right on the <laughs> right in the ballpark. Years there. wasn't too far off either. No, no, and it the wasn't. Team was only one off. Exactly. And, you know, I, I did. I learned a valuable lesson last night, okay? Sometimes when you try to uh, jump into the MLB hot stove as an insider, I'm not a journalist. I don't claim to be a journalist. I don't want to be a journalist. I like what we do here. Um, but sometimes when you when you hop into that MLB hot stove, you get third-degree burns. And um, I did last night. Pretty bad. Didn't delete the tweet. I saw a lot of people saying that. Don't even delete the tweet at Pat McAfee Show. Fire him. He's not even sorry about it. It's like, well... It's a pretty big part of the entire thing. We don't thing, delete though. tweets here. Yeah, why, why would I, I delete do. it? I mean, in the time, I thought, I mean, you already got community noted. People can see, right, oh, hey, this guy's a dipshit. He was wrong. That's the way it goes, you know? 
Uh, but again, I, I would like to stress and emphasize, like, I'm a Yankees fan, okay? I woke up this morning having to not only eat all this stuff with people telling me to kill myself and they hope I have a terrible Christmas, Whoa. but then also... Oh, they brought Christmas in? Christmas they brought, a far. lot of people bringing Christmas into it as well. Um, what the hell? Oh, Christmas? I, that's what I thought. But now, not only that, um, you know, yeah, your integrity getting called into question, hey, you should be fired, all, all that kind of stuff. Yamamoto is also not a Yankee, which is all I wanted from the get-go. So People forget. Yep. Yeah, exactly. I wasn't, you know, wasn't trying to be a journalist, wasn't trying to steal Jets Thunder or John Morosi or John Heyman, who, again, you know, just last year said Aaron Judge was going to the Giants. No one was telling him to kill himself when he did that, uh, and he's an actual I'm sure insider. Were. I'm sure people were. Well, maybe. Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> maybe. I'm sure. But, you know. That it, insider world is not fun waters to tread in. It's no. not. But, boy, you were king for a little bit, weren't you? I was. How I'll, about that photo? Yeah. Was, how about that photo? Unreal. Of, you that, were the king. How happy is – look how happy Ty is. Yamamoto's going to the Yankees. I'm already trying to – Order a Yamamoto jersey in that in that moment. I cannot wait to wear this thing on the show next week. I had no I, at this moment when I took the photo. I had no clue what had happened. Mm -hmm. I had no idea why he was so pumped up down there. I just told that I was just told that he broke the news. And it was like I don't know. I don't know baseball enough. But a lot of people are calling for you to get fired. I want to <laughs> let you know. <laughs> Step back in that batter's box Hell next yeah. time you get a good source. <laughs> I appreciate you. Okay, I appreciate. Maybe you. I mean that was the biggest story in baseball. Maybe uh, maybe we don't just try to jump into the, the top of the entire thing, but I appreciate that you're. It, it came from a good place. It did. You led a lot of people astray, though. A lot of people. Mm -hmm. You know, whole city. Mm -hmm. A lot of people said this guy works for ESPN. I don't. It's not true. I don't. We had our office party last night. Exactly. Mm -hmm. I was drunk at it. <laughs> what? I broke some news at it. All right. But our show is on ESPN. We got to remember that. Yeah, if the absolutely. information wasn't. Okay. That, we got to remember that. Absolutely. Now, if there was any thought that he did sign with the Yankees last night, boy, what a morning it would have been for you. Oh, oh my God. God. Oh, my God. <sighs> but you were wrong. Yep. And uh, so, uh, Bruce, listen, I don't want to call you to a microphone. You're not a wizard on it. But, like, in this particular case, it seems like you're a massive piece of this whole story. Bruce Brown, Yamamoto is not a Yankee. Hope you're happy. Why'd you lie to Ty Schmidt? I mean, I think we're looking at a late flip here. He he was in yeah. deep talks with the Yankees. They were at three hundred million. It was a very generous offer. It was on it you know the the five yard line there, uh, and he laid flop to the Dodgers. It's a sad scene. Um, he's probably gonna stink. <laughs> All right. So we just dug deeper in this entire thing. He's not going to stink. In the L.A. Dodgers right now have $700 million in Shohei, $325 million in Yoshi Yamamoto, $136.5 million in Tyler Glass. Gal, Lau. Uh, yep, Glass now. For uh, Pirate. Gla of course. Yep. Mm -hmm. Of course. Great player. <laughs> Three hundred twenty-five million in Mookie Betts. Dog, right out mm -hmm. of Boston. Yep. Weapon. $165 million for Freddie Freeman. So this team's winning? They're going to be very good, yes. Okay, so everybody that's mad... At Ty Schmidt right now, which we understand. Now, I laughed hysterically so at the whole situation. And that was rude of me to do at the time. Because then when I read people's reactions, I was like, oh, no. There's people that are living and dying with every single Yamamoto update. And yours was the biggest by far. So we don't love that holiday season getting let down. But you would also like to tell them, let's make some money to get Dodgers to win a World Series. Well, I mean, yeah, they, if if they do everything they need to, they are the best team on paper. This is what the Yankees did, right, back in the day. Yes. This is what the Yankees did. Absolutely. And they won a bunch. Yeah, and I thought this is what the Yankees were going to do kind of moving forward after going 82 and 80 last year, not making the playoffs. You trade for Juan Soto. Now you just got to go out and get Yamamoto. They they almost did it. Sorry, the Dodgers are going to win the World Series? Uh, they are probably a very a heavy favorite. Right hey, now. congrats to the Dodgers. Yeah, that's awesome for LA. I'm so happy for the Dodgers. Yeah. Sweet. They got the Rams a, and the Dodgers. And they yeah. were introducing him last night as if he hasn't lived there for six years. Yeah, I yeah. love that. Played on the Angels. Doesn't exist. Go to the Dodgers. Now you're in our town. Yep. Now we'll give you a jersey. Welcome. Now we'll have you on the sideline. We'll do the whole thing. Shout out to show. Hey, shout out to last night. One half of the hammer. Don Cowboys tone digs. 91% of the money was on the Rams last night. That it's a giving season, okay? It's Christmas, Christmas weekend, and uh, you know this is one of those weekends where you don't worry about where the money is because as it is, again, this is the books. The books are going to say this weekend. You know what? Easy picks this weekend. Whatever you think is going to happen is going to happen. Don't question it. Just Ooh. put it, put in all your bets, and they're going to all win. We kind of started saying that yesterday. Whenever it just like appeared to be too obvious. Now this game ended up thirty twenty two. Now the yeah, he got a lot Raiders uh, do some stuff. I'm sorry, the Saints do some stuff late. I thought of Derek Carr in a Raiders jersey, especially with what the Raiders did last Thursday. But Derek Carr, uh, you know, a couple touchdowns late. They make it look a lot closer than it was. Rams still cover, and I don't think Rams are ever worried about no. a damn thing. Mm -hmm. Great stories coming out of this Rams team. Here's Sean McVay talking about the team immediately. 
immediately afterwards, especially heading into the beautiful holiday weekend. I love the way this guy talks. Love this group. Really proud of them. And uh, it's going to make for a good Christmas. So Merry Christmas to you guys. I'm out of here. <laughs> Hi-oh. about how tough you guys are when the balance passing and running is what we saw tonight. Yeah. I think, uh, I think this mic is the shits. I love that. Because <laughs> I was about to say, the only thing we don't really like from the Rams is their PR guy. But, but like, uh, probably the one in charge of the microphone department. But like, everything he says about loving that group, I think we all do. Yeah. And there was a play last night from Matthew Stafford, I think, that reminded the world. Like, hey, the guy that's playing quarterback for this Los Angeles Rams team, he is one of the most talented ball throwers in the history. This little rollout to your left. You're an old man drafted in 2009. On the move, high up, on a third and four. Now, nine all has been doing that all for a long, long time. Let's go back to Detroit, you know, whenever he was just a young buck up there in Michigan. Get the guy to jump. Let me go around Hilarious. this song, bitch. He's been doing this for a long, long time. It's not just sidearms, by the way, with uh -huh. Matthew Stafford. Let's go back to the Super Bowl. You remember this one? In the Super Bowl. Oh, this guy's not a Hall of Famer. Why? Oh. Hasn't won any playoff games. Can he perform in a big moment? Oh, I oh. don't know. In the Super Bowl, no look. Cooper Cup dime. With Matthew Stafford leading the charge and Cooper Cup being Cooper Cup, he's always going to be good. He's always going to have attention on him on the defensive side, so that's going to open it up for everything else. Kyron Williams. Mm -hmm. He's becoming an absolute dog for the Rams. I think he's top five rushing this season. We have the leaders in a graphic here we'll get to at some point today. They run the rock, too. They're not scared to do that. And with Matthew Stafford's ability and what Cooper Cup does, and then this rookie, Puka Nakua. Man. He has 450-yard-plus games this season. That's the most in the Super Bowl era for a wide receiver. So when you talk about being dominant as a young buck, you ask, like, uh, maybe he'll get 100 yards a game. Maybe he'll have a couple touchdowns. Puka Nakua, whenever Cooper Cup was not in, and even when Cooper Cup has been back, has become the go-to guy for Matthew Stafford. Now, is that because Cooper Cup commands so much attention and Puka Nakua is in one-on-ones? Maybe. But who cares? With the way Matthew Stafford can sling it, the way that Sean McVay can draw up plays and the plethora of weapons that they have on the offensive side, why not the Los Angeles Rams? Especially as they continue to get hotter and hotter and hotter what? as the season goes on. They're playing their best football right now. That is when you want to be playing your best football. Joining us now is a man who's won multiple Super Bowls. He's been a mentor, a consultant, an advisor. He's been a podcast host, what? a live show host, what? an author, a TED speaker, Ooh. and a man who just loves seeing football Done right. Ladies and gentlemen, Michael Lombardi. Yeah! Thank you, Pat. Lombo. Good to be here. Thank you. Hey, Merry Christmas. Thank you for joining us last night. What Matthew Stafford showed in prime time with that one sidearm throw, let alone everything else that yep. he's doing everywhere. And last week, he had a fadeaway 20-yard on the sideline mm -hmm. dime to... It wasn't Cooper or Puka. Uh, Higby? It might have been Higby. Whatever it is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This dude Higby. is phenomenal. Yeah. With Sean McVay leading the charge. With Aaron Donald on defensive side and Raheem Morris doing his thing, are the Rams a contender here all of a sudden, Lombo? What are your What are your expectations for this Rams team that going into the year, I don't think anybody thought they'd be having this convo out of Week 16. Well, look, Stafford's played really well, and I think with the running game with Williams, and you look over the last five games where they have really run the football. You know, they're five and one, losing the overtime game to Baltimore. Everything's set up by the running game. And Stafford's ability to make great throws. And I think this team has overachieved. I think their offensive line has really stepped up their game. Early in the season, they were getting beat up up front. Pittsburgh beat them up up front. Philadelphia did the same thing. But this line, Ryan Wendell, their offensive line coach, has done a really good job. And I don't think you can understate what Raheem Morris has done defensively because we don't really know a lot of their players. They're not recognizable names other than Aaron Donald. But yet they play good complementary defense. They're 13th in the league in red zone defense. They're 17th in third down. They get off the field. They don't turn the ball over. Last night they did. But for the most part, they just play really well complementary football. And when McVay can run the ball, when he's got a run game going, then they're really hard to stop. I, I think the play of the game, you showed the highlight there. You know, this is kind of when you know you have a good team. Cooper Cup runs a route hard down the middle of the field and he knows he's not getting the football he knows he's not getting clear the ball. out and clear it out but he runs it with unbelievable effort and then nakua catches the ball inside for what a 25 30 yard game yeah. that to me that to me is when you've got a lot of things going for you that to me is when your team's connected everybody's helping one another win and i think sean i said this 
eight weeks ago. I think Sean should, is, is this is his best coaching job that I've seen, and he's had a lot of great coaching jobs. Hey, I think that the clear out routes, especially by your best guy, the guy's getting paid the most amount of money. Like in when your guys are blocking down the field, like the Niners, like that shows like culture commitment. I think, and then you hear, yep. you hear like the way McVay says, "I love this group." Matthew Stafford has said numerous times, "I love this group." Feels like the locker is very connected, even though they knew going into this, it was like uh, we got to refine what our team is after mass exodus, almost from what our team was. Beautiful culture, beautiful coaching job. Let's talk about another beautiful coaching job, and I saw you talking a little bit. How about Pete Carroll in the Seattle Seahawks? Yeah, I love it. Now, Drew Locke yeah. had that magical moment, a uh, moment that he'll remember forever, and a moment, I think, that reminded him that he is still the guy. Even though he hasn't played in a while, he had an opportunity to showcase if he was still the guy, and he said, yeah, I'm still the man. Yeah, that is great to know. But I think the Pete Carroll, you know, we don't talk because he's on the left coast over there. They're in the Niners division. So it's not a lot of conversation, you know, and, and it's rude by us, how they say. Sure. It's very rude by us. But Pete Carroll is answer it. Is that Pete? Who is that, Bill? No, no. <laughs> that a rap no. song? That would have been awesome if you just answered that. It was no. Bill Belichick. Hey, Bill! That was Sopranos. That was the Sopranos theme. That's my ringtone. So it's that's what it is. Hey. Tommy DeVito you has a shelf it. life. It. Yeah. it was either the Godfather or the Sopranos. That wasn't going to be hard to predict. Anyway, <laughs> anyway, it was the Godfather. I changed it. Older anyway, coach. Well, go you got to go from one to the yeah. other. And maybe maybe yeah. we get a little uh, family guy, uh, Italian, yeah. sure. next. You know what I mean? Yeah. These are all really... No, 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 no. Okay. I didn't know. Uh, I didn't know what Italian sounds we want to go with. But um, <laughs> anyways, shout out. Love the Paisanos. Got a horn underneath the shirt here. But we never talk about Andy Reid, obviously. Older. Yeah. Successful head coach. Mm -hmm. This guy's a goat. Bill Belichick, obviously. This guy is the goat. Pete Carroll, been coaching a long time. And he never gets yeah. brought up in the conversation of, like, greatest coaches. He never bitches about it, obviously. He just kind of shows up each week. Why do you think we don't talk enough about Pete Carroll? And what do you think it is about Pete Carroll that is always has his team kind of in it? Well, I, I think a lot of it is the fact that, you know, Pete, you know, he, he – be, some of the betting world and, you know, having working at Neeson and being around it, the betting world takes a lot of shots at Pete for his game management. Don't think he's a great coach. But when I was doing football done right and I set the criteria, to me, Pete's a Hall of Fame coach. He's a Hall of Fame coach. He's won a Super Bowl. He's won a lot of games in Seattle. He's built the program. And, and his childlike enthusiasm for what he does is remarkable. And his excitement, and, you know, he's able to kind of get the players to play, and they've had a change over the roster. I think John Schneider does a great job as a general manager. So, yeah, I don't think he gets enough credit for really being a great coach, being able to make hard decisions. He's had to change the staff a few times. Look, he's had to go through quarterbacks, you know, and he went through the Russell Wilson thing, and now he's got locked. But that win the other night was remarkable, going 97 yards against an Eagle team that you thought was going to be able to take the game over at that point and make a couple plays. And yet, you know, Pete, I think what he said in the locker room after the game is so true about football, right? Football is never won in the first quarter. It's never won in the second quarter or the third. you got to win the game in the fourth quarter, and they did. Whereas last night, what you said earlier, the Saints were never in that game. But when you look at the game book and you see Carr's stats and you say, oh, wow, he had a good night. No, he really didn't. He didn't play well until the fourth quarter. And that's when you have to play your best, and I think that's what Pete talked about. Yeah, the, the score, they still covered. If they backdoor there. Man. Boom. Yeah. 91% yeah. of the money was on the Rams last night. Right. It, it was unbelievable. It, 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 when that happens, Pat, I, I always feel like, you know, on paper, there's no way the Saints were going to win that game. It, the, everything you broke down, the Saints weren't going to stop the run, the, the, especially when McVay is, you know, when you go against McVay, you got to be really good defensively. And but yet with the money kept pouring in on the Rams and the line wasn't moving, you're saying something's way. going on here. It like what's way. happening? It, yeah, exactly. It was going towards the Saints. Uh, you know, I kept you know I kept hearing all oh, a lot of pro a lot of pro services. You know where they can move a number. We're on the Saints, but that's the same thing that happened last week in Washington. Everybody was on Washington last week, which I couldn't understand how that could even be possible. But yet, if Rivera goes for the two point play, they could have covered. Raiders, too, last Thursday. Everybody was on Raiders over Chargers yeah. for whatever reason. That was a gift. We're just in the time, right? Hey, it's holiday season. Yeah, right. love it. No matter what God you believe in, we'll celebrate something. Bingo. Okay? Mm -hmm. This particular time of year. And the football gods said, you know what? We're in. Uh -huh. Here you go. We'll have the sports books who are very rarely – 
completely off. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Be completely off on a Thursday to kick off week 16. And the boys have some questions about what's going on this upcoming weekend. But I want to talk about a clip that I saw from the GM shuffle earlier talking about Aaron Rodgers in the New York Jets. I think your take is obviously a very important one because you've built teams, you've been a part of Super Bowl programs, you've had every single title there is in a football building. And what's going on in the Jets is very fascinating. But the points that you brought up, I think, have not really been chatted about anywhere except where you are. If we run this clip from the GM Shuffle the other day on VEASAN, I believe. Woody Johnson should just give the charter of his franchise to Aaron Rodgers. It's what he should just do because everything is under the umbrella while Aaron's not here. Everything, like the incompetence in the coaching, the poor game planning, the decision make. I mean, you can't get any worse offensively. Adam Gase... <laughs> was not good and they couldn't wait to run him out of town sala it's like oh it's okay you know bill belichick's on the hot seat he's got six super bowl he doesn't deserve to come back he's a horrible coach robert sala yeah we just lost aaron Rodgers. he'll be back it's good he's really good he's a defensive specialist they've been outscored by miami 64 to 13. okay so i do appreciate whenever you get worked up about yes. you know and you get going you have a great ability to run like that but it is a fascinating situation because I think we all very much yeah. un understand what's going on over there. Okay, what was supposed to happen this year, they're just going to have to sit through some hard times, and next year it's going to happen. But what if it doesn't? Then you then there's you know what if what if who knows how it all it it's an interesting dynamic because like Robert Sala getting a pass, Hackett has gotten a pass big time. The offense pass, because they've had so many injuries, obviously. Mm -hmm. It's like, it is interesting whenever you think about how the NFL is. Will it ultimately be the right decision, you think? And what do you think they ultimately do over there? All right, so if, if you spend any time around Coach Walsh, and I did, and you read his great book, which is hard to find online, the one he wrote with Brian Billick uh, called the, the, the Building of a Champion, Walsh talks about a lot of different subjects, especially teams that are on losing streaks. And he covers so many scenarios and he addresses so many situations that relate to pro football. But oftentimes when you're on a losing streak, you know, what he would, what he was trying to educate coaches about was the fact that there's no magic formula. There's no quick fix. There's no one reason why you lose. And so what the Jets have done is they violated that code of conduct. Because when you do that, when you say, we just lost Aaron, then you take away discipline and responsibility from the organization. And I think that's unfair to Aaron. Because, look, even if Aaron were playing, it wouldn't, they wouldn't be very good. Oh. It, it, he's not just one player. We're not the NBA. It, it, it takes a collective group, three levels, offense, defense, and the kicking game, to work in harmony. I mean, Kevin Stefanski is doing one of the most best coaching jobs in the league. He's got nine wins. He's lost how many quarterbacks? He's playing with backup offensive linemen. I mean, guys we haven't heard of, and nobody's saying what a great job he's doing. Meanwhile, in New York, oh, we lost Aaron. It's okay. We're going to get blown out. Oh, we got Zach. You know, like when they lost Aaron, there, there should have been an adjustment in the game plan. And then all I heard was, well, you know, we're running Aaron's offense. No, 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 no. We're, we need to run the offense that helps us win games. Like, whatever happened to that? Where's the accountability? And everybody just pushes it under the carpet like, oh, it's okay. And it's unfair to him because when Rodgers comes back and it doesn't work, everybody's going to blame Aaron. Everybody's going to say, well, Aaron screwed it up. But it's, it's, it, So now it's all on him. Well, somebody's got to take accountability and respond. Like, they're terrible. They couldn't stop Miami last week. This is supposed to – meanwhile, Cleveland's defense stops people. All I hear about is the Jets are the greatest defense in the history of football. The Ravens go shut up. 2,000, you can't compete with the Jets' defense. Meanwhile, they can't stop anybody in the run game. They give up plays. I, I just think it's an unfair narrative. And if you're Woody Johnson, yeah, I, I, I want to run it back, great. But we better sit in a room and say, what else went wrong, guys? What else do we got to fix? Bill Cowher yesterday said he appreciates what Joe Brady has done with Buffalo because they got Josh Allen under center and the team that they have, they're running an offense that would work for who they have. Be who you are. No, don't be who you are. Be what you are mm -hmm. is what he's saying. You need to acknowledge what your team is and then put together the greatest plan for your team to win. He talked about in Pittsburgh yep. how they got Najee Harris, who's 235 pounds, sidecar. and they're in, yeah, he's in sidecar and shotgun as opposed to under center, having him run downhill. It's like that's like a little thing that instead of just doing what your team is, what Najee Harris is, you're trying to do what you want to implicate into the offense. And it's like that has kind of been the conversation over there for the Jets. And I don't want to go – you know, to college ball here. 
But like Florida State, who ended up not in the college football playoff, which is the big story. But whenever they lost their quarterback, who was absolute stallion, yeah. okay, not saying he's not. But they started running wildcat. Like mm -hmm. they like came up with ideas to make up for the loss of like the Iowa Hawkeyes yep. never once tried wildcat. <laughs> never. It's like you can see who's like trying to win, like who is trying to gain an advantage versus like our system works. This is what we got to do. So they just punted on an entire year over there for the Jets, and the fans now are sitting as fans of team a team that has the longest playoff drought out of all sport. I appreciate you mentioning that, like, if Aaron comes back and it doesn't work, now it's all on him. Because remember, we're waiting, we're waiting this entire year. Yep. We have all the pieces. We just need Aaron. And then whenever you see – that's interesting. We didn't even work hard this offseason. Oh, go home early. No big deal. You know, we're, we're going to take a break at minicamp, all this. Like, you realize these other teams, you, you know, it's just – it's not about one guy. It's about the team coming together collectively, being in alignment, you know, and you've got to be demanding. I mean, I heard Cowher yesterday. He was great. You know, you got to push – you know, the head coach has got to push everybody. What he said yesterday is what I've often said. There's only one person in the organization, one, who's paid to win. There's only one guy. That's the head coach. Ben Johnson can gain 10,000 yards and score points for the Detroit Lions, and he'll get a head coaching job at the end of the year. It doesn't matter if they win a playoff game or if they win the – it doesn't matter. He's going to get a job because his offense is that good. Same thing with the defensive coordinators. They can do that. There's only one guy who's paid to win, and that guy has to separate himself from the staff and drive the staff towards winning. I don't see that in New York. I see Salah, he's 33% winning percentage coach. He's just sitting there saying, oh, it's okay. You know, it's fine. No big deal. When Aaron comes back, we're all going to be good. Like, there's no pixie dust. Like, I, there's none of that. You can't have that. And to me, it's an absence of leadership. So I, I'm tired of talking about them because it's really ridiculous that people fall into this narrative. It's about one player. It's not fair to the player. Yeah, I'm excited to see what they do. There, there's a lot of options there. And what is the ripple effect for down the road? Who knows? But Greeny's got high hopes still. Yeah. Greeny's got high hopes yeah. moving forward. Hopefully that's the case. Speaking of other cultures, Ty has a question for you. Yeah, Lombo, just yeah. curious. Uh, you mentioned, you know, us thinking that like the the Eagles would would go into Seattle and be just fine against a backup quarterback, and then obviously that that wasn't the case. Uh, they have a pretty favorable schedule down the stretch here, but is it too late for teams like them and the and you know the Chiefs are still in in good position? They could end up being the number one seed in the AFC, but can both of those teams like do they have enough time to kind of turn things around and and get this like sour taste out of people's mouths like? Are they both still threats to win the Super Bowl, or do you not think that's the case this year? Well, they both have a heart of a champion, so you can never count them out. But I think what we fail to do at our league is evaluate the wins, right? We all just see the W on the scoreboard and say, well, we won the game. Well, I think there's three levels of winning, right? There's the dominating win, which, this, which the Rams had last night, right? The scoreboard made us at eight points, but that win was dominating. Then there is the win where basically – you, you have to understand that, you know, it, it isn't quite – you didn't play perfect, right? You, you, it was a dictating – I call it a dictating win. You didn't dictate the game, but eventually in the fourth quarter, you kind of came from behind and you won the game. Or you the other team kind of couldn't make a play because of you. And it was a game that you won. And then there's the dangerous win, which is you win the game, but you really probably didn't play well and you didn't deserve to win. The other team lost it. And I think when you look at Kansas City and you look at Philadelphia, the last really dominating win Philadelphia had was in week three against Tampa Bay. That was the last one they had. And the last one the Chiefs had was when they played the Raiders a couple of weeks ago when they won 31 to 17, when they were what, got behind 14 and nothing. And then before that was when they beat the Chargers at home. So when you don't have a lot of dominating wins, you as a head coach have to figure out, what do we have to do for this team to make it better? What do we have to do? The Eagles, forget about who they're playing. They're going to win the games they have to play. They got to get Jalen Hurts to stop looking at the rush and move it. Bosa. They got to get Jalen Hurts to stay in the pocket and vertically work the pocket. Hey, Bosa, and look, hey, that Bosa line was wild. Bosa's like, hey, home field advantage is uh, on the line here. Hope everybody watches what we did. Jalen's watching the rush every single play. And they've been 0 3 play. since then. They've been 0 3 since the Niners game. Right. So, like the play, the, the throw, he's got a crosser wide open. And he throws it to A.J. Brown down the field. The throw he makes on the other sideline, he sees a rush and he takes off. He got it. And, and sometimes now, this isn't always on the quarterback because he's getting hit too much or he's getting too much pressure. He's got that so team. I think the Eagles have to fix that issue, right? 
they're not going to fix all their issues. They have to play a certain way, and they have to fix it. The Chiefs just have to accept the fact that they're not going to blow anybody out. They're not going to win 45 to nothing. they got to methodically keep making plays, and they got the best player in the league so they can do it. Look, Kelsey, I don't know if he's not 100%, but they got to rely. He's got to have to kind of have a second season here to get it going because teams aren't even double him anymore because I don't think he's 100%. What do you think? Leg? Something? Because his knee it, coming into the season, what, right? Wasn't yeah, his knee? Yeah. yeah. yeah what? Wait, are we still on? I think so. Yeah, you're yeah. on. I hear you. I can't hear you. And yeah, your mic is out, too. Big-time power outage. Yeah, massive power outage in the building here. Long yeah, long. it looks like we're frozen on ESPN. <laughs> frozen on ESPN is how it seems. The TVs are also... And they uh, just went to commercial, potentially. Okay, and they just went to commercial, potentially, is what Foxy just said. Okay. Cool. So we well, are completely dead? It's good to be with you can guys. Can you hear me? Yeah. 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 I still can't now. hear anything. Lombo, can you hear me? I hear you, buddy. I sure do. He said, what he the hell happened? Here. You get the yeah, storm can, there? All right, I got to plug into something here. We're on commercial break, but live on YouTube still? This is good. I don't know this about that This is a nice feel good Friday. Not sure. Not yeah, sure. I'm not sure about that now. What's that? What's that? Well, he's not sure if we're on We're definitely live on now. YouTube. I'm watching it. Okay. Hey, look at us, dude. This is awesome. Still got to figure it figured out. This feels like a coordinated attack. Yeah, this does feel as though someone's coming after us right now. Lama, why'd you have to say that about Woody Johnson? Thanks a lot, pal. Yeah, I'm sorry about yeah, that. Yeah, what you said. You said, oh, I can hear now. Nice. Go ahead. <laughs> Every time the power goes out in the building, I always think about the Texas School Book Depository. Two, uh, 20 minutes before the assassination, all the power went out <laughs> in that building, too. So, Not that, not that it had anything still to do with it. Still on ESPN. Oh, we're back, and we're still on ESPN? Yeah. Yes. Yep. We're never off? We we're, were never off. We were never off, so boil. Welcome to journalism. <laughs> okay, out here in, in We didn't in, curse, though. That's a good thing. We were professional. I think exactly. so, too. I, I think we're, yeah, we handled it pretty well. Yeah, how about that? Happy Feel Good Friday here. Um, this could potentially be, you know, some of those Yankees fans. Yeah, yeah they could be. You know, because what happened last night where uh, we broke some news. I plugged in over there. I wonder if that's the right play. Anyways, you said a lot of really good stuff while we were completely out of power mm -hmm. and everything went pitch black over here and I couldn't hear it. And I do appreciate it. Uh, at the end, we think Chiefs are going to be okay? Yeah? Yeah. I, I think they just have to play a different style. We have to be okay. We have to stop <laughs> expecting the Chiefs to be explosive. We have to just accept the fact when they get Pacheco back, they're going to run it a little bit more. They're still going to be creative. they got the best player in the league. And they have 33 drops by their receivers, right? So that's not going to change. That's been a pattern all year long. So their defense is really good. And we just got to expect them to not be as dominating as they were. It's really more about us than it is about them. They're going to be a hard out. Look, they're tough to play. You know, when you have the best quarterback and you have an offensive coach and a head coach like Andy Reid, who's very creative, you know, one game, you know, you guys played in playoff game. One game – is it's not about who's the best team. It's who plays best that day. Hey, let's talk about a Super Bowl preview potentially coming on Monday night. What a dream the football gods have dropped on us. Yeah, Lombo, thanks for saying that about the Jets, too. I'm going to wake up on Christmas morning full chub pumped about that entire thing. <laughs> uh, but when we're talking about possible game of the year, possible best situation you could have on a Christmas evening on a Monday night, Niners Ravens feels like a possible Super Bowl matchup. And obviously, Lamar was asked about it. He said, Hey, we're locked in. We're, this is a game in December. This isn't February, which I assume you love to hear. But what are you expecting mm -hmm. out of this, you know, Lamar versus Raven, uh, versus the Niners D line, excuse me? And how do you see this game going? Because it's been a lot of Ravens talking up the Niners and a lot of the Niners and Kyle Shanahan specifically talking up the Ravens. Well, look, they're both really good teams. When I talked about the dominating wins or uh, the, the dictating wins or the dangerous wins, these two teams have really a lot of dominating wins, and you could see it. I mean, the, the Ravens have rarely, rarely played from behind. Now, they've lost some games in the fourth quarter, but they've been really good, and they find ways to win, and Lamar in this situation is outstanding. Lamar's at 86% against the spread when he plays, and he's a three-point or more dog. I mean, he's very good in this situation. And I think that them being a five-and-a-half-point dog in this game really is the best thing that could ever happen to John Harbaugh because he can just sit there and spend all his day saying, look, nobody thinks we have a chance. We're going out there. They've already given him the title. So I think Armstead's injury is impactful. I think Hargrave's injury is impactful. We saw Arizona run the football on him last week. And if, if Baltimore can run the ball on them, this is going to be a close game. I believe it. And I think it'll certainly help. And look, the one thing about the, the 49ers, 
people don't realize this, but if you get in the game in the fourth quarter, Kyle Shanahan's 0-38 when he's seven point or more down in the going in the fourth quarter. Whoa. Uh, what 0 is that? 38. 0 and 38. 0 and 38 when he enters the fourth quarter. That feels like if he's down crazy. seven or more points, he's he's 0 and 38. Now here's another one. That you. feels All like right? a crazy this, stat right yeah. there. Yeah. That feels right, let me write this one down for you too. Write this one. Kyle Shanahan is 1 thir- and 31 when trailing by three or more points entering the fourth quarter. He's 0 and 37 when trailing by eight or more points in the fourth quarter. Oh, and how about those two numbers, right? Oh, and 37 when trailing by that. So my point in talking about this is that if you're the Ravens, you get this game into the fourth quarter, you, 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 the, the, the numbers are on your side. And, and, and why, is the Niners, why is that? Because their offense because seems here's to be so explosive. I understand you can't come from behind some styles, but I feel like they they have a style that yeah. is explosive and can play from their, their style is built. It's the same thing with McVay. Their style is built on play action pass run game. So they want to throw the foot. They want to get the lead. They want to play action pass you. When it becomes an all-pass game, all of a sudden their pass protections become a little bit dis- not as good, right? So it's a drop. When it becomes a drop-back pass game, it's not the same. All of a sudden, all their great weapons that they have have to play a different game. When they can dictate the game to you, when they play positionless football like they do in play action pass element, they're hard Suck to play. Up. But if mm-hmm. the, they get behind. Now it's a different game, and the numbers back it up. I I would often say, uh, Kyle, and I've had this conversation before. You know, at some point, when do you fix? You got to be in a drop back pass situation, and yet they're able to do it because they get the lead and they have this unique ability to to con- to play from in front, and their defense can rush the passer. So yeah. I think Baltimore is a little the same way. Baltimore's just lost leads in the fourth quarter. Ravens five-point dogs in Santa Clara, California. And uh, the conversation is, should they feel disrespected by the books? That's the same exact oh, point yeah. spread Packers, Panthers yep. this weekend <laughs> as well. So, uh, How so, are the Packers five points favorite better than anybody? Has anybody watched the last two <laughs> games of the Packers? That's what Ty Schmidt has said. But you would think maybe Joe Barry understands he's back against uh, the wall. Yep. Mm-hmm. Bryce Young, you know, this is a potential team on the offensive side in the Panthers and maybe they could get a little spark. And Jordan Love hasn't been terrible, nope. you know, so – Maybe they maybe it's a big one for the Packers, but also maybe Chris Tabor, the new interim coach, is yeah. dancing oh. in the locker room. Yep. That Panthers team might be hot right now. They want a game in front of 14 people. Yeah, that's that right. is tough to do. Absolutely. That is not easy. That's COVID. They're playing COVID football yeah. mm-hmm. this past weekend. Got a big time dub with an interim coach. Tone has a question for you, Coach. Yeah, Lombo, the other game of the weekend, Cowboys and <laughs> Dolphins. Um now, it feels like there's more questions, narratives about these two teams. You know, Cowboys can't win on the road or on the grass, and the, and the Dolphins haven't beat any good teams are, are kind of the narratives uh, that you hear. How do you feel about that game, and which team are you more confident about moving forward? You know, I, I think both teams are situational based. I, I'm more confident about Miami because of their defense. I, I think Fangio does such a good job defensively. He makes it hard on the opponent. Now, look, Tennessee scored 14 points in the fourth quarter. So, you know, they've had their moments where they've let down. But for the most part, they're so good. They're so well coached. And offensively, when they can run the ball, when they limit the amount of third downs they get into, they play Canadian football better than anybody. They When they have less than 10 third downs in a game with their offense, they're hard to stop because they're making big plays. So I have more confidence in them. What I worry about Dallas is when they go on grass, they're not the same team. They're not as fast. And then Dallas, and I've been saying this, their defense hasn't been as good as we all think it is. It's a defense that has to play from in front. They've played 90 less plays this year than their offense, their defense. And that's good. For me, one of the things I truly believe in, to play good defense in the NFL, you have to play less defense. The offense has to carry the load. So their offense has had the ball for 32 minutes. In this game, I kind of feel like they'll struggle with Miami. You know, Ramsey's, Ramsey's a you know elite cover guy. And a lot of this game is going to come down to the offensive line of Miami. Are they going to play? They have a lot of guys hurt. Same thing with Dallas. Tyrod Smith might not play, and that's going to hurt it. So I I think both these teams have liability. I don't think either one can get to the Super Bowl because of those liabilities. 
but I trust Miami more because their defense is sounder. Mike McCarthy said that Zach Martin is ahead of Tyron Smith, who has a back. Zach Martin actually quad yep. during game last week, missed game. He said he's ahead of schedule for Tyron Smith, who has a back, also got hurt in the game last week. Those are a couple massive pieces mm-hmm. that offensive line in that offense that mm-hmm. obviously is going to have to go. A lot of people bringing up the fact that the Cowboys are front runners. You know, like, hey, they're not bad whenever they're buzzsaw, but whenever they get, I yeah. think Bart Scott said this morning, this is how it's always been. Cowboys are front runners, but if you come punch them in the mouth, they can't handle it. Ooh. I don't believe that because I believe like, I don't either. I don't believe that at all. I, but I'm just saying that is the narrative about that Cowboys team, and it's like I guess we'll find out here as the games go on. Like Mike McCarthy, I think during this season, as it's gone on, a lot of us have been like Mike McCarthy's going to be coaching Cowboys forever. Yeah, yeah, back. And then imagine if they. I'm. The, I don't think this is going to happen. I still believe in Dallas Cowboys and Dak Prescott. Absolutely. Okay? I still believe in them. But there's people who have completely given up hope on them. If they take a downward spiral and don't win a playoff game and it ends bad, like, that conversation's right back, yeah. right? And I mean, that Mike McCarthy conversation is all the way back in Dallas. Would it not be? Yeah, I don't see how it could be. Dak's having almost an MVP season. And I think you got to figure out why are they not as effective. I think one of the reasons they struggle on the road is their offensive line has not played as well on the road. You watch the Philly game that they lost. They have a chance first and five at the six-yard line and turn steel camp block Hassan Riddick, and they have to they, they basically give up a sack, and the next thing you know, it all falls apart. Look up in Buffalo. But he was under constant pressure. The line hasn't been to the same level on the road as this has been at home. And I think that affects them. And I think they do miss that Zeke Elliott piece to make Pollard a better player. Pollard averaged 9.5 yards per reception last year in the passing game. This year he's down to 5.6. They don't get those explosive plays out of it because he's now the bell cow, right? Mm. We always think when a great player shows up and plays 20 plays that if he plays 40, he's going to be doubly great. When in reality, he won't be. He'll be less effective because he's playing too much. So I think there's some circumstances that are out, not related to Mike McCarthy, which I think Jerry would understand. Look, why would you want to change offenses? Is with Dak playing as well as he's playing, knowing you got to redo Dak's contract? Hey. I'm on Big Mike's side all the time. Mm -hmm. I like Big Mike. I like the way he operates. But with the Dallas Cowboys, that's how the conversation always goes. So we need them to continue to go how they've been going all season because I became a pseudo-Dallas Cowboys fan on first take pretty much Mm -hmm. for about seven weeks straight where they were just – I'm like, wait a minute, this is a good football team. I still believe it. Let's go, Mike. Come on, Mike. Let's go, Big Mike. Come on, Mike. Hey, uh, down in Atlanta, okay, a situation has arose uh, this morning. The Atlanta Falcons are being fined, I think, $75,000. Arthur Smith is being fined, I think, $25,000 for the handling of the injury report in week seven with the Bijan Robinson situation. I think we all remember that, where yeah. the conversation afterwards from Artie Smith was that he was not feeling well mm-hmm. and there was no injury report, of no mention of him in the injury report and everything like that all week. People got real pissed. I mean, it was very loud. Wow. It was a huge conversation. The NFL had investigated it. Now, I don't necessarily want to because we don't know what all was found out and everything like that. But that injury report is something that every Everybody's trying to game, or the NFL really monitors. Like this is the first time I think I've heard this openly being discussed about being a penalty, where there's been some manipulation of the injury list before, right? So what is the line, and yeah. how does it normally go? Well, I mean, I think it's being monitored well a lot closer than ever before because there's so much interest in it. And look, the NFL has betting partners in terms of these betting, you know, whether it's, you know, DraftKings, whomever, FanDuel, you know, all this. So, you know, they want the betting information out. The NBA is kind of make a mockery of their betting, of their injury report. I mean, you know, a guy shows up, you know, he's questionable and then he misses six weeks or he's probable and he can't play. So I think it's only fair to the fans that there is some kind of, understanding and i think you can read the tea leaves based on what the coaches are saying for example you know trevor lawrence this week is he going to play well he's out there today on the field on friday he's listed as questionable there's probably a good chance if he's in concussion protocol that if he's out of the field today he's probably going to play whereas zach wilson's not going to play because he wasn't on the field today so i think you have to look at it and i think you as a coach have to err on the side of caution right i think you just got to say okay here's what it is here's the reality and, you know, we'll make a decision on game day. You know, the Joe Burrow one was interesting because we saw him have that sleeve on his right hand. We saw him get cl- moving his hand Off like it. it got hit mm-hmm. when he got trapped between the defensive lineman and Orlando Brown. 
but they said there was nothing wrong there. Yeah, they'll probably investigate that too. We're many weeks later yeah. from that particular mm -hmm. Atlanta Falcons incident and now obviously with the Bengals incident. But I do appreciate the fact that they're trying to get to the bottom of it. But gamesmanship's been taking place forever. You talked about the NBA. How about the NHL? The NHL is like upper body. Yeah. What is it? Uh -huh. Up ab above his waist. <laughs> okay, above yeah, his waist or it. something. <laughs> and then below his waist or something. It's like that's bananas. But as a gambler, and as a fantasy footballer this year, of course, owner of a fantasy football team. That's right. I didn't operate it, but I did own the team. Yeah, you yeah. operated. I was in the fantasy football world. It's like I would like to hear these things. And the Bijan Robinson fantasy owners, and I think anytime touchdown scores, we're pissed, and they have been pissed Livid. the entire time. Maybe there's a little bit of an answer for them. Now, before we get out of here on the hard out, and we can't thank you enough for joining us every single week this season. You've crushed for us, Lombo. Yeah, you've thank crushed you. for us. Lombo. No, no, you guys are great to me. I love it. I, I, I would. I, I love it every week. I listen to the show all the time. I love it. I'm, I could be happier to be here and talk football. It's the best. Okay. Well, we're lucky to have you, and we appreciate the hell out of you and all those kind words. Awesome. Now, not warranted, but awesome. <laughs> now, let's talk about a couple bets you like over this Christmas weekend. Obviously, we got Saturday, I, Sunday, what? Monday what? games. Who do you like? What yeah. do you like? How do we see it? Uh, well, last week, I like I like Chicago, and I, and I like Buffalo. If you had three and a half with Chicago, you won. If you had three, you pushed. This week, I, I'll take Baltimore in the five and a half. Oh, I think wow. Lamar's really good against the NFC. I think it's a good play. I think it's a little bit of an overextension, plus the 49ers injury. You get five. I still would take it at five. I like that one. I would take Jacksonville. That line's moving a little bit. I don't know what you guys have it here with Jacksonville right now. I, I see Jacksonville is minus uh, getting three points in Tampa. I think Lawrence plays, and that line will move to probably a pick or, or, or Tampa by one. It opened with Jacksonville favored by three, but the Lawrence news changed it dramatically. So I would take those two games if I were uh, here. I just got to pick three winners this week so I can beat Russo on, on his contest. Yeah, well, I hope you do that. I uh -huh. hope you kick ass. Russo's been crushing this season. Mm -hmm. His Christmas takes are obviously something special, but you. Oh, yeah. No, he, he can't even. I, I don't know any self-serving Italian that's eating veal parm on Christmas Eve. I'm going to. There's just no way. If he's not eating fish on Christmas Eve, he got thrown out of the Italian club. I'm just telling you. Okay. Hey, uh -huh. listen. Sean Stolato almost got, you know. Yeah. Oh. There's a lot going on in the Italian uh, I got to meet that Sean Salado guy. I gotta I gotta meet that guy. That guy's a yeah, I, I gotta have I gotta talk to that guy. I gotta meet him. You're the best, ladies and gentlemen. Michael Lombardi. Merry Christmas, Thank Lombo. You. Thank Merry you guys. Christmas, Lombo. We appreciate you, Lombo. Genuinely. He's awesome. Yeah. Best. Program. And I think he feels like he's getting hot right now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you know what I mean, I feel like he thinks right now is the time More information. in which we are gonna win games. He said, Yeah, last week I split and I won. There's no music coming out of this. All right, no. so it's probably done. Because in the middle of that conversation, it was... Yeah, yeah made it through. Good. Made it, it through, though. We're live the whole time. Got a lot of text messages. You are still live. Yeah. You are still live. Good Watching enough. right now, you are still live. Some people are probably waiting for us to drop a big old... Woo! AJ Hawks on the other side. Same with Jet Passing. We nailed it. We nailed it. Pat McAfee sell on your stunner at WrestleMania. Stunner! Where does that rank all the time? I, that's got to be pretty up there. Man, top three. Top three. And, and I got to say top three because The Rock, number one, the way he oversold, and Scott Hall and some of the other guys that took it. But I mean, you know, Pat has a natural feel for the business, epic performer, great on the stick. I apologize that you're a punk bitch. Athletically, you know, that, that match he had with Theory was awesome. And then the, the kicker was not only the sell of the stunner, but to lay there selling, still guzzling the beer, the presence of mind to ad lib and improvise it like this is a moment without even thinking about it. I think he's amazing. Uh, he's very entertaining. And as a human being, I like him a whole lot. I and mean, here's, here's an off the record story. The, the second night that we were, we were at Mania, I was just planning on drinking uh, whiskey with my Broken Skull Sessions crew. And so we had a bottle all lined up and we were just gonna drink during the show and show respect to the people that were working. Well, Vince called me into his room and said, hey man, would you come out in the end? Stun me, McAfee, and Theory. And I said, sure. So I couldn't drink until after the show. Okay, so the show happens. I go out there, stun all those cats. Brock Lesnar gets stunned with, with his match, the main event with Roman Reigns. And me and Brock have been wanting to bond together and, and have a few cocktails to begin with. And he goes, hey man, you got anything? 
I said, yeah. I said, where we're meeting? He goes, my locker room. So it was myself, Brock Lesnar, Larry, or one of the trainers who's been there forever, you know Larry, Larry. and uh, Pat McAfee. What a day, what a dream, what a life. Now I'm gonna have a couple more Steve Wazers, wise, maybe a little whiskey, wise. And we took down a fifth, we just passed the bottle around it. First we were drinking out of little cups, then it just turned into the bottle. And we, we uh, took down a fifth of Baker's Park in about an hour, and then we all went our separate ways. <laughs> and I heard through the grapevine that uh, a couple of those guys woke up with some your headaches. Really? And I don't want to undersell this. Really hungry. <laughs> you know what I mean? From what you had inside the ring that we saw on camera, and then what was there a thing afterwards? Well, you know, there might have been. There might have been, yeah, a lot afterwards. <laughs> but it was a bonding moment, at, you know, after a big show like that of four guys, and I just barely met Pat, but he was already one of the boys because of his football background and how everybody, you know, the WWE has taken to him. And me and Brock's relationship goes back. The following program is a collection of stooges talking about happenings in the sports world. It is meant to be comedic informative. The opinions expressed on this show do not necessarily reflect the beliefs of their peers, their boss, or ESPN. There may be some cuss words because that's how humans in the real world talk. If you are a young, please seek permission before watching any further. Hey! Why? Let's go! This show stinks, and the fact that you listen, we are very, very thankful for it. <laughs> the all-time leading tackler for the Green Bay Packers. You pink! Damn it! Be a friend, tell a friend something nice. Could change their life. We want that! We want that! Sports! 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 Hello, beautiful people, and welcome back to our humble abode, the Thunderdome on this Feel Good Friday, December 22nd, 2023. Hour two of the program starts now. Football! Happened last night as the Rams smacked the Saints right in the mouth. Now, it was only 30-22, and the Rams did cover, which we are all there very thankful mm -hmm. for. 90% of the betters bet on the Rams to cover minus four against the Saints at home. And Derek Carr is a good guy. Mm -hmm. Great guy. Derek Carr is a good, good guy. Yes. And let's remember that. And he was highly sought after in the free agency market, sure. and he ended up being down there at the Saints. And we all assumed the Saints were going to win the NFC South because the amount of question marks around that entire division. But instead, we sit here now going into Week 17, and everybody's questioning what the future of the Saints is yet again. Mm. So that's no fun for them. We apologize to the great Saints fans. Who that? Who that? Who that say going will beat them Saints? A lot of people have. Yes. Yeah. Okay, but that's going to change. We're pulling for you guys. And on the flip side, the Rams, low hopes, low expectations going into the season. Who's on our team? We only know like five people. Sean McVay, Matthew Stafford, Aaron Donald, right. Cooper Cup, Poop right. and Nakua now. Mm -hmm. And that entire squad, Raheem Morris, a defense coordinator, yep. have really got their best football playing right now. They figured out how to beat teams. Now, they got a run game. They got play action. Sure. Is it enough to beat the Niners, which is always going to be the question mark anytime you're in the NFC or in that division. So, big game last night for them. We love them. We appreciate them. We're excited to watch the final couple weeks here of the NFL season and figure out who's doing what. Now, Boston Connor and Ty Schmidt are here at the Talks Table. Con man had a bad night last night at the office Christmas party. Had his Gary v yeah. Gentleman yeah. Jack, stolen from him mm -hmm. just three seconds after learning that he received that particular gift in the White Elephant Christmas party thing last night. Yep. Yeah. And Ty Schmidt was the face of baseball for three to three and a half hours. Mm -hmm. Four hours. What? He was trending in Tokyo. What? New York. What? Indianapolis. What? And Los Angeles. What? Now those are obviously four of the most powerful cities yep. <laughs> in the entire world. That's right. Ty was the king last night. Until everything came crashing down. Yep. The office Christmas party was a success, I do uh -huh. believe. But your baseball breaking news was not. We'll talk to Jet Passing in about 17 minutes. I appreciate you swinging that bat, though. Thank you. Boy, Ty. No, thank you. Not a lot of other people do outside this office. Mm -hmm. But I appreciate you swinging that yeah, bat. I appreciate that. Breaking news. And then you say you're not a journalist. I saw a guy get upset about that. Uh, yep. Don't be playing both sides of the fence. I appreciate you swinging the bat. Mm -hmm. I appreciate Keep you. Keep playing. Thank you for, you know, giving me the, the support and... Um, for, for just saying, hey, go ahead and swing the bat. Yeah. No, now, we're going to have to, situations are situational. Well, well absolutely. And, and let's just be, let's just you be know, clear. Don't do that. That was a, that was a Don't big, do that with football. 
Yeah, yeah we need not, you well, know. Clearly. Um, but also, you know, I, I thought I had it right. I thought I had it right. I didn't. And like I said, sometimes you just get burned by the hot stove. I won't be putting my hands on the stove for quite some time. You're like a baby in this game. Yeah. Exactly. You learned. <laughs> ah, don't do that again. Exactly. Men in black fingertips yep. happened to you last night right. in the hot stove. No more finger prints. No. Mm -mm. Way to go out there. You got, you got community noted. Yeah, I did. They're not doing that to nobody. No, they're not. <laughs> Jet Passon, who is a part of the community noting mm -hmm. there, will join us in about 15 minutes. That's journalism. One half of the hammer, Dad. Cowboys Tone Diggs, 91% were winners last night. Yeah. Woo. That's good news. That's great news to start the week. Hell yeah. Going into week 16, yeah. Christmas weekend, a lot of games, Saturday, Sunday, what? Monday. What? We'll be back Tuesday just going absolutely bananas about winning every single bet. Is that what we're doing this weekend? I think so, because, you know, Thursday night, that helped build up the bankroll, and then whatever you, money you get from grandma or grandpa this weekend, you take that, you just put that straight in your bankroll, and you put it all on everything this weekend because we're winning it all. All right, yeah. see, I don't think we should do that. We should do responsible gambling, but we do know that the books are giving us gifts this holiday season. Last night was one of them. Joining us is a gift that never stops giving. Yep. He's a college football national champion, a Super Bowl champion, a Ryder Cup winner, a father of 10, a COVID survivor multiple times. Whoa. Okay. Yeah. President of Ohio, Ohio State legend, all-time leading tackler for the Green Bay Packers, ladies and gentlemen, Aaron James Hawk. Hey, hey, hey. Hey. Hey, Hawk, did you see Ty was king last night? Ty was king last night. Yeah, I want to congratulate Ty by that. I think the, the language was perfect. Got pushed over the goal line by Matt Suey, I believe, was in the uh -huh. tweet. That right there is, I think, was the capper that made everybody truly believe this. Being told that Godzilla Matsui <laughs> helped push it over the goal line. Yeah, that really legitimized it all, I think, as yep. we read it. And to be completely transparent, I don't know enough about baseball to know everything that he was saying in there. But I heard pushed over the goal line, and I said, okay, it was close. Yeah. Brotherly shove. Yes. Mm -hmm. And that's Big what Godzilla guy. Matsui did for it all. I was in hook, line, and sinker. I was congratulating him with his happiness and Bruce mm -hmm. and other Yankees fans that I have in the Rolodex from the office. Christmas party. Way to go, you guys. Reliable source. Incredible. People didn't know at the time. Yep. yep. And then that did not happen, AJ. It went the opposite direction. Boy, was it loud. It was loud for our guy, Ty. Well, it happens It happens to all the, the, the best insiders, doesn't it? They all sometimes, you know, shoot or shoot. So Ty took a shot. Hey. Sometimes it doesn't happen, but it's not. Ty wasn't lying. That was his truth in that yeah. moment, wasn't it? Yeah. The Schmidt report is going to miss every once in a while. Sometimes. Mm -hmm. Sorry. You know what I mean? That's the way this goes is you're trying to cut your teeth in the yeah, business. Exactly. As a true journalist. Exactly. And, yeah, you know, Schmidt sometimes report. you shoot and you shoot it over the backboard. But at the time, the arc was like, oh, baby, that is a sweet jump shot. That's going in. This is um, – this is Car uh, Carlton. Carlton, yep. Carlton. Yeah, oh, yeah, exactly. Yeah, Shooting Prince. at the private school. Yep, yep. Uh, and yeah. then it just it goes over the backboard. That'll happen. But you're in the area. You got the number. Yeah. Close. And yeah, really close on everything. You know. Three years, years off. Couple, yeah, a couple years off. Uh, you know, again, we based on what everything and everyone was saying, it was a done deal. He was going to the Yankees. And then... At you know the clock strikes midnight, and he says, eh, "I'd rather be enough." They had him on freezing cold takes last night. Obviously, that's not a place you want to find yourself. Getting community noted is a big deal. Yeah, that means people are like, "Oh, okay, this is doing too much." You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Excuse me. A lot of people have seen this. We need to correct the narrative as quickly as possible. Says the platform X. Now, Adam Schefter is yeah. not happy with. No, he's not. A darn Schefter's happening anymore either. He's about fed up with it. He said, "Hey X, let's make. You know what I mean? Too much. Let's Figure make this. That's too far. Too much." Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of happening on our platform, and Ty was a part of a lot of it during the Thursday night football game in which we just chatted about it a little bit. A.J. Hawk, Matthew Stafford is doing things right now. At his age, he's got to be near my age, same class. Now, he got, he got picked 221 picks before me. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. His uh, signing bonus was uh, 57950000 more. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, that's the difference between pick one and pick 222. Sure. Right? Good to know. Always been a gentleman, though. Great. Always been incredibly classy, and I very much appreciate everything he's done for our draft class, just out there dominating. But what he is still able to do with the football and how he's seeing it in his competitive spirit and his competitive energy and everything they have going over there, why not the Rams, AJ? After watching last night, it's hard not to buy into the hype. SoFi is beautiful. Sean McVay is very likable. And that old man is still mm. doing shit like that in the middle of games on a third and four. Oh. This Rams team is yeah. fun, AJ. Jay, this is a fun team to watch kind of come together. Yeah, it was, hey, it was a hell of a catch by Robinson as well. Stafford understands that. Like, what a, 
watching Matt Stafford play is so fun. We talked about like his toughness and how I, I think his team kind of rallies around that as well. When your quarterback is breaking his back and breaking his neck and continuing to play like he's done in the past. But like, away. look at this. What do they call it? Arm talent when this guy can drop down, throw from all different angles, do all of this stuff. Like Stafford is, he is still very, very special quarterback. And man, Puka, Puka's great. Cooper Cup. They were able to run the ball. Like, they looked very, very good last night. Yeah, and we got a chance to see this live whenever they came and played the Colts. There was, like, some throws that Matthew Stafford was making, like, in person. It's like, oh, that's a circus act. Absurd. Like, where he's putting that ball is not what humans are supposed to do. That's a trick shot that people take 15, 20 tries to do, mm -hmm. but he's doing it live in person. And obviously, we chit-chat about Aaron Rodgers being the best ball thrower of all time. I think everybody agrees with it. Matthew Stafford's yeah. got to be top three, top two. Maybe in his conversation, in his circles, they're saying ain't nobody can throw a football like our boy Matty Staff. What a dog, what a legend. And Kyron Williams oh, yeah. running the rock yeah. for the way, or, or for the Rams the way that he is. They found it over there. That's good coaching out of Sean McVay, mm -hmm. it feels great like. Great coaching. No, yeah, it feels like great coaching. Obviously, defensively, Raheem Morris is a, is a stud. We know that. But, yeah, I, I guess, what's their ceiling? Like, do you ever think about that? You, you're saying, like, people want to crown them champs right now. They look awesome. They really do. But I think they've been in a great situation where no one really – it's all about managing expectations. Like, what – we thought it was going to be a disaster. We're like, who do they have to play? What are they going to do? They don't have any money. Like, all this stuff. Their picks are gone forever. The Rams are going to be struggling. We thought McVay might take a job in TV. So yeah. the fact that he's done this, like it's pretty nice to fly under that radar a little bit. Now they're going to get some get some lights on him, some people talking about him a little bit in a positive light, but I think they can handle it. National championship last year, Matthew Stafford joined the game day set. He was sitting at the very end. Mm -hmm. And it was at that moment where we were all like, this dude's got to be done. They don't have any players anymore. Nope. Their cap is completely Ruined. Injury. He had the neck thing. They don't have yeah. first rounders. And obviously, his season last year got cut short because mm -hmm. of a very serious injury. Has a full family, has a Super Bowl, has his Hall of Fame resume. Why the hell would Matthew Stafford come back? And then, like, he was sitting on the game and he asked, How we feel? We feel good. And he goes, Oh, yeah, I feel great. And it was like, there was never a doubt, it feels no, like, nope. in Matthew Stafford's head. Ball. You know, as soon as he was told, hey, you're, yeah, you're going to be able to play football again? Yeah, absolutely. All right, sweet. Babe, you want to do that podcast? Obviously. Do the podcast. Whatever you need yeah. to do. Whatever <laughs> it is. Uh, I need to go play a couple more years. Loves ball. From Texas. Yep. Just loves football. I have massive respect for old Matthew Stafford, and I think everybody does, but whenever he's able to lead his team, okay, to these now, obviously these records are absurd. Ridiculous. He has all the tops, yeah. all the tops. Who's throwing the ball? Nine. Okay. Oh, who has the most short? Nine. Who has the most? Nine. nine. Who's the rookie though? With nine. nine. Like that is just like how it is. That is a part of his resume with how great he has been throwing the ball. His toughness, his football acumen, everything like that. But I think the fact he came back and they all had the option not to. Yes. Aaron Donald, your resume clear. Yeah. Money yeah. clear. Everything you need clear. You can if you want. We're rebuilding this whole thing. You're going to be the only human that anybody knows on the defense side comes back. Sean McVay, uh, they're offering like twenty some million dollars to go call some games. You want to? Nah, I can't look those guys in the eyes. I'm coming back. Matthew Stafford, like it's. That's a cool thing, and I'm very, I'm very, very pumped for them. And uh, good on them over there. Yeah, I think they get a first rounder in uh, 2028. Yeah, I think, yeah. I think Chuck's guy got a sack last night. The one that he we were talking about. Can we bet that uh, 91? Yeah, number 91. Yeah, and then Kyron Williams scored a touchdown also. Mm -hmm. yep. And Demarcus Robinson. He said he liked the crossers with Robinson mm -hmm. and Atwell, and it happened. Robinson scored a touchdown. Yeah, yeah. he was balling. Did you hear how my last two weeks, Chuck? By the way, uh, yeah. yeah, spot on. Yeah, he's starting to see the field. Yeah. yeah, he's starting to see the field a little bit. Did you hear Al talk about the McVeigh situation? Because when you just said that, it reminded oh, yeah. me of Al talking at the end of the game about how after they won the Super Bowl, immediately after McVeigh was he wasn't in a pretzel. Obviously, he just won a Super Bowl, but like the idea of doing this again, like reaching the mountaintop and knowing what it takes and then having to like rebuild and start from scratch was something that like weighed very heavily on him is what Al Michael said. And that's why that TV conversation got so loud. But then after a couple months, it was like, okay, 
Like, I, I can do this, still have nine, to your point, still have Donald, still have those guys. But the defense, like, I know they gave up 22 points, and it looks like late, that. Late, Yeah, yeah it, it was all garbage time, touchdowns. Like, the defense is unbelievable and truly still have no idea who's on the defense except for Aaron Donald. And now, uh, I believe it's Jordan Fuller who had the interception. Yeah, oh, yeah, Jordan Ful- Fuller had the interception. Check the notes. I just checked. Well, I he's forgot around. what his oh, name was. I didn't want to screw it up. Yeah, because he's the guy that got the interception. I was like, okay, I know another guy on that defense now. Yeah, it's fun to watch teams on primetime that you had no expectations for. Yes. And I also appreciate the fact that this is a long – it seems like it's not just this year. Mm-hmm. feels like they're in it, you know? Like, hey, we're going to rebuild this thing. Let's try to do that. Great for the legacy. Also great for fans to get to continue to watch it. Can they beat the Niners? Ooh. Can they beat the Niners? That's the question. Uh, NFC, though, let's stay in there. AJ, you're the all-time leading to Eckler for the Green Bay Packers. Hell yeah, you are. Congratulations, this guy. Let's yeah. go, Good Hawker. job, AJ. A lot of people have put that. Proud of you. Very historic uniform on. Mm-hmm. A lot of people have ran on the Lambo as the leader of a defense for the Green Bay Packers. Mm-hmm. Curly Lambo, when he envisioned oh. the entire program and organization, and all the way through now, a lot of people have donned uh-huh. those green and golden, mm-hmm. off brown color that sometimes oh, yeah. wear the With Acme blue. Packers blue. ones yeah. in the tundra. This guy's all time. Leading tackler for that. Mm-hmm. Phenomenal. Pretty cool. So many people have gone through there. The defense stinks now, though. Yeah. Yeah, it does. And a lot of people say, is it the players or is it the coach? Well, I got a chance to hear the coach speak for the first time. Mm-hmm. And he said he's heard us a lot, I think. More specifically, Ty in his answer. Go ahead, Joe Barry. I understand you're going to say, you know, you coach for your job every week. But do you think these last three weeks, you're back yourself is pretty much up against the wall in terms of? Oh, yeah. I mean, I read what you guys write. You know, I hear what you guys say. Oh, um, but no, I think I that's, again, I that's, that's, that's the great thing about our league. That's the great thing about the National Football League. It is, you know, the top of the top, the best of the best. Um, like and game. I mean, I, I think that's a, that. not only a a every year thing. That's that's an every week thing. But that's that's again when you sign up for this, we, when we sign up for this. Tony, we know that's what we're getting into, and that's the thing I love about this league. Um, that's the thing I love about the sport, and uh, yeah, it's 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 the highest level of competition at every level. With every position. It's a meritocracy, professional sports. You know, at least you would hope. Some places there's obviously some political situations that are taking place or investments that aren't panning out. Obviously, not everybody's perfect, but professional sports, normally a meritocracy, you have to earn your way to the top, which is why it's awesome. You know, there's a lot of businesses where it isn't that way. We all know them. We all hate them. Professional sports is that, though. But a lot of Packers fans would say if that was the case in Green Bay, this guy would have been gone a long time ago. That's the first time I've ever heard him get to speak. Sounds like a good guy. Sounds like a great guy. What are your thoughts on how he addressed the entire situation? And do you think this is potentially something that can make this Green Bay Packers defense against Carolina Panthers and Bryce Young this weekend maybe step up and have a big-time game, big momentum game as we swing into the playoff season? I mean, yeah, it's, it's definitely possible. I mean, Carolina hasn't been lighting up the scoreboard. We know that. But I, I respect Joe Barry actually being – like honest and sincere in that he could easily say, no, I don't, I'm, I'm focused about ball. I don't care what you people do. Like and try to speak down to him. I, I like that. He said, yeah, like the, I'm a human. This is real. I, I feel it. My family feels it, all of that. Ooh. But I don't like, what can this defense do though? He said my family, like, yeah, it's been a tough yeah. week for me and my yeah. family and everybody. Like they all understand the situation, but it, can he do anything? What can he do? The defense just has to play lights out for the rest of the season, and then he's okay? Well, what just dial up the right place, the right coverages <laughs> at the right time. Motivate the boys uh-huh. in the proper ways. You got the talent, okay? You have more talent than most teams. I think you have more talent than what a lot of people would say in other places. What is talent, though, without proper direction? Nothing, and I think that has been proven time and time again here. But maybe with all the outside noise, especially him addressing it, just like the Sean McDermott stuff that happened a few weeks ago, mm-hmm. maybe this is the thing. That brings that defense around, Ty. Maybe this is what makes Joe Barry call his best game that he's ever called as a defense coordinator, even going back to previous jobs where maybe it wasn't as fantastic. This could be it, Ty. I'd like to hear this for you. Come on. Yeah, I mean, it. it's, you know, on one hand, it's like, okay, well, like you said, like that's the first time I've ever heard him talk, and we had to wait, you know, 15 weeks for them to kind of realize, like, okay, yeah, my, my back is up against the wall here. My job's on the line. But they also they finished with Carolina, Minnesota, and Chicago. And I think if they win all three of those games, then like they have like a 78% chance to make the playoffs or something like that. So like 
Yeah, it's pretty simple. Like, hey, Nick Mullins threw for three hundred and uh, 12, I forget what it was. Three hundred eight. Hey, that Vikings team, you don't know what you're going to get there. But, but Justin. that's that's the other thing. It's like, okay, well, if if you can't, and again, Nick Mullins is an NFL quarterback, so like, it's nothing against him. But if you can't. Kind of Tommy DeVito. Exactly. We saw what, and, and what's Tommy DeVito doing now? You know, he, I mean, his his he's career, making appearances for free. <laughs> yeah, he is. Cutlet. He is. His career is kid. basically over. Uh, what? But, I mean, that, oh, what was no, that? No, that's what people are saying. Can't hey, say that. that's what people are saying. I didn't say it. What? Guys like Lombardi said. Chuck, Chuck said it yesterday. Um, but it's like he for, alluded to he, it. He alluded to it. I don't think anybody has officially said it. Well, yeah, he's obviously been breaking a lot breaking, of news. Yeah, <laughs> no, breaking. What's your problem? Breaking New York? news time. No, I, I I love Tommy DeVito, but huh. you know, the, again, the Packers. He, he was the NFC Player of the Week playing against the Packers defense. Okay, and he's not doing that against. Anybody else? They have Bryce Young. They have a backup quarter, third string quarterback in Nick Mullins, and then Justin Fields. So it's like if they can't turn things around, then then yeah, I think he he knows full well like I'm probably going to be out of a job next year. But we'll see. Maybe the guys do rally around him. It's tough because Devondre Campbell tweeted earlier this week that there's like a lot of in at least the defensive room like coaches blaming players, maybe not taking accountability Worry for themselves. About you, 59. Yeah, ex- exactly. Oh, yeah. So. So oh th- yeah, he was talking to himself in that. He tweet. was, yeah. he was, because he's saying how like you know, hey, you know, you come back and you play when you're still banged up and and it's not good enough, and then it's your fault for not getting guys lined up. And they were saying him and a couple other guys on defense were kind of taking shots within the meeting room. So like, hopefully, all that stuff was kind oh, of. Oh, that's good to hear. Yeah, Whoa. exactly, exactly. That's good. Yeah. That? That's good to hear, AJ. That's great. I don't love it. I don't love it. I don't think it's great, especially Devondre is not like a. I don't think he's a super outspoken guy that's always doing these kind of things. So, yeah, he must have been pretty uh, frustrated. Completely odd character. Yeah. <laughs> Very much so. But, but still have everything in front of him. All you got to do is go out there on Sunday. Oh, and, boy, this team feels like uh, it's kind of hey, – One good win. Here's one good win away from getting right on the right track. Exactly. Right. Hugging. Everybody hugging again afterwards. Mm-hmm. Hey, remember mm-hmm. what we were doing last week? Your fault, my fault, our fault. Ah, we're, we got it fixed, right? We move on. Yep. No rearview mirrors. Spaceships don't come equipped Boom. with rear view mirrors. They dip, and they we're just going to keep it moving forward. They, Good luck to the pack. What's up? They need a dominating win. They can't just they can't yeah. beat the Panthers twenty four twenty one on on Sunday and just be like okay. Panthers go ball club twenty one points. I was going to say more like ten eight. Yeah, twenty. If they score twenty one points, Joe defense. Barry better get. That's what know, I'm saying. I mean, the, the Packers line. defense is not world beaters. Okay, like there's a very good chance that Bryce Young looks the best he's looked all season on Sunday. But they need to win convincingly. They can't just eke by. All right. Well, let's move along. Ty, let's stay in your vein of life. Okay. I don't love it on this feel good Friday. No. Me neither. I'm not feeling that good. <laughs> well, you might be a little. You know, did you get some water, IV. We could have got uh, an IV in here right. for you. That's cool. I'm good. Office Christmas party last night was uh, a lot of adult spirits were being. Go wild. People had a good time out there. Uh-huh. White Elephant got going. Mm-hmm. It was good. Great job in the setup to my lady. Absolutely. Thank you, Sam. There you go, Sam. That was a lot of fun. AJ, maybe next year. Maybe next year. Douche. Jesus. He Joining come, us. I didn't get this is coming to any of our stuff. Uh, he come to okay. Joining us now. I don't Join- live in Indianapolis, unfortunately. He'll travel for other people's stuff. Yeah, bingo, but he won't come. He won't go to Nick's wedding or Ty's wedding no. or your wedding no, or no. whatever. Yeah, I'll go to yours, Con Man. Yeah, okay. When? When I'm dead? <laughs> is that because that's not until you're getting married? Or, yeah. Or is that because AJ won't show up? Because AJ won't show Both. Sorry, guys. I'm going to go on cruise over Meyer. Yeah, bingo. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Old uh, ABC Akai crew. Yep, uh-huh. that's right. Yeah, I remember. I remember. Yeah, he raised a lot of money. Yeah, yeah it did. Raised a lot of money. And a lot of jeans. Uh, speaking of money, a man last night on the internet that is associated with our program got the money portion right. Yeah. Of the second biggest free agent signing of this MLB offseason. Mm. Now, Yoshinobu Yamamoto. Yep. is a Japanese weapon yeah. who was kind of surveying the MLB to see where he wanted to go. Ty Schmidt last night with his reliable source. That's right. Yep. People in the know at the time. Exactly. At the office Christmas party that we were all attending. And some boots on the ground in New York City. Told Ty that Yamamoto is going to the Yankees. Congratulations, Ty. The Yankees are all the way back. Yep. Mm-hmm. Your dream since yeah. before this guy even stepped foot in the United States was for him to be 
a New York Yankee. Yep. This is going to save the Yankees who suck now, right? They sucked last year. Yeah, yeah they suck now. Well. It's a Mets city now. No, the Mets were worse than the Yankees were, but. <laughs> that guy? Yeah. His city. No, 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 no. Garrett Cole won the Cy Young last year, so if anything, it's his city. Nobody knows that. Or but anyway, it was supposed to be Yamamoto City, <laughs> and you broke the news, and boy, you were the king of baseball. You were all over the place. You were trending all the way in Japan. What? You were trending in Los Angeles. What? You were trending in New York. What? You were obviously trending in the Midwest. What? And boy, it got big quick while we were hassing some Jack Daniels mm -hmm. and bullet whiskey. Mm -hmm. right. Inevitably, you were completely wrong. Yep. Mm. And one man was right. Yeah. yeah. And they actually utilized this man in your community notes where the platform X decided, we got to correct this guy. This is getting too out of control. Ladies and gentlemen, joining us now, the man who broke the news of Yoshinobu Yamamoto mm -hmm. to the Los Angeles Dodgers. Senior MLB insider at ESPN, our friend, Jet Passing. Yeah. Oh, there. Oh, that's better than last time. You guys upgraded. Yeah, Love well, that. I think you upgraded, Jet. Yeah, and uh, the reason why we think you upgraded is because we thought we had it, didn't we? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Our show was Titan, the biggest baseball insider of not only the day, but maybe the decade. That's right. In Ty Schmidt. And then all of a sudden, a jet drops a bomb <laughs> that changes the course of Ty's internet existence, oh. baseball's future, what? and maybe even society as a whole. Yeah. Whoa. The New York folks are not happy. They had Yamamoto mm -hmm. as a Yankee. Yeah. Hopes were through the through the roof mm. because of Ty Schmidt. And Jet Passing says, "Ah, uh ah, -uh, that's a lie. That's wrong. Only listen when I speak." What was last night for you? And how did we know that it was going to happen last night? Like, was that a very well-known thing, uh, or is Ty maybe the one that you know sped this whole thing up a little bit, mm -hmm. Jet? No, no, T Ty. Ty, I'm going to speak in a language that maybe will be familiar to Ty. Ty Schmidt, you are a spectacular scumbag. Oh, that's Lou Holtz. He is. Nice. That wasn't yeah, very that's good. The, it may not be very good, but you are a scumbag. Like, <laughs> what do you think mean, about Jack? what you, this, you like this scumbag. show? This show, this show understands scumbaggery, especially you, AJ, better than <laughs> any show out there. I think so. AJ, would you not say what Ty did last night? was about as bad of a thing as you can do to an entire fan base to make them think that the one guy all off season that they've wanted, you know, the Yankees weren't in on the Otani sweepstakes. They, oh. they went and traded for Juan Soto, but this was going to complete the off season. And, and then because of bourbon, he decides no. to go. Oh, no. The ad sources. It sources. The no. ad sources. Don't you bring the Your bullet into this. sources were named Jack, Jim, and Jose. Hi -oh! like, oh, three amigos. That was a terrible shot back yeah, in the so day. So bad. Oh, that was so bad. That was punishment for people. Four wiser. But maybe we were having a good time. Don't, don't blame Ty for that. But boy. He thought he was king, too. He's a part of the Yankees fan base, you got to remember. Think about how he was feeling whenever he found oh, yeah. out. Look at no, him. I'm, I'm surprised. <laughs> I hope that's not the new face of baseball. Baseball's in trouble already. Oh, jeez, uh, whoa, whoa, jeez. Couple, just say it. Couple whiskeys there, but uh, but did you know that the Yankees were out of it whenever Ty put that tweet out, or what was it no, really close? No. Oh, it, it, you know what? It wasn't in the end all that close because the Yankees were still twenty five million dollars shy of what the Dodgers ended what up paying for Yamamoto. Twenty five over one and eight. 25 it, it, you know what the Yankees offered a shorter term it was 325 for 12 years for Dodgers. uh the Dodgers and so the Yankees were nine? actually 300 for 9 yeah, I think it was 300 for 10 yeah like yeah. They, they were they were offering more reported. they were offering more per year yeah right. no you weren't close like oh, you weren't close I, he was kind of close that was the Yankees close. offer he was right and he knew what it would take you get the 326 that's 1 million more that's right then the Dodgers feels like Ty was pretty close Ty might have got duped but, well, first off first off Godzilla Matsui <laughs> 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 like people should have known at that point. What are you talking dropping, about? <laughs> you're dropping Godzilla Matsui. Also, Yoshi. Like, are you friends with him? Yeah. Who do you think his source okay. was, Jet? Yeah. What are you talking <laughs> about? 
He actually speaks Japanese. You got to remember, the guy got accepted in Harvard. Yeah, He's right. not some dope. Even I, though I the did, internet's calling I, some get, dope. I got duped. You know, it's as simple as that. Okay, hand up. I got duped. But like you said, Jet, I mean, I'm a, I'm a Yankees fan. You think I'm not heartbroken yeah. this morning? You think I'm not sick? No, I, th- I I seriously <laughs> think that I'm I'm shocked that you showed up today. I thought you were going to like run oh. into witness protection for a couple of weeks, just like we you do. know, lay low, brick kill the guy. Um, I mean, it's uh, it's not good, Ty. There, I was getting. I have to be honest. I got like a half dozen texts last night, <laughs> ranging from "Is this true?" to "Who is this moron?" <laughs> to to like. I, I mean, they, they know, like, people thought that I was giving you the information and that you were running with it. Like, I saw that theory out there, which was, uh, it was a special one. And uh, so, uh, Can we just it, get, like, a genre of the humans that are texting? Anybody from the Yankees text you? Um, yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Tim Kirchin? Who is this idiot from the Yankees <laughs> organization? <laughs> Oh, man. <laughs> Steinbrenner takes it. Jet? Uh, all right. So, uh, Jet, we've had our fun with Ty being an insider. Yeah. Okay. And maybe that time is Ty Schmover. Pa? Yeah. Oh. Hey, is that Ty Schmover, Gumpy? What do you th- you think it's Ty Schmover for the insider game there for uh, Ty Schmidt? Unfortunately, the Yankees were just being cheap is the issue. I think I think Ty's oh. contract was oh. spot on. They just didn't want to spend Ooh. the money. Oh, so Ty was putting out into the world yeah. what needed to be done yeah, exactly. to get this thing done. And instead, they just chose not to listen and text Jet instead calling you an idiot. Wow. Should so, I be running so, the Yankees? That's a question that we have now. <laughs> That's a question we have now. The, you know, the, the interesting thing about Yamamoto, this went way, way higher than anyone anticipated. Even as of a couple of months ago, you know, executives thought, okay, maybe it's going to be $200 million. Uh, possibly if there are teams involved, like we think there are going to be, you know, Yankees. Mets, Dodgers, Giants, Red Sox, Cubs, like the biggest teams in all of baseball. If they're all involved, maybe it gets to like 225. Nobody thought that there was going to be a $325 million contract given to him. And on top of that, Pat, the Dodgers have to pay another $50 million to the Oryx Buffaloes, Yamamoto's team in yeah. Japan. So in well, reality, this is, this is a, this is a $375 million guarantee for a guy who has not thrown a single pitch in Major League Baseball. And it, I mean, you know, doing this less than two weeks after signing Shohei Otani for $700 million, like what the Dodgers are doing right now is trying to not only take over Japan in the eyes of the fans who they want everyone wearing a Dodgers hat, they are trying to take over all of baseball and create a juggernaut in a dynasty. Okay, so you mentioned a couple things there. Seven hundred million dollars to Shohei, three hundred twenty-five million to Yamamoto, one hundred thirty-six and a half million to Tyler Glass now, three hundred twenty-five million to Mookie Betts, one hundred sixty-five million to Freddie Freeman. Okay, so this is what the Yankees used to do, right? Is there some sort of tax on this, or is this just, how does this work out? How uh, they can just pay everybody? That sounds awesome. Yeah, I. It's nice to be rich. Um, you know, they they had coming into this year had just signed a bunch of guys to one year contracts last year because they wanted to get beneath the CBT threshold. They didn't end up doing that, but they wanted to get under the luxury tax and save up for this because like this was their plan. Otani was clearly always number one for them. They felt like they could make incredible business with him around internationally with the owners who do international business and you know, this is the Guggenheim company, so these are extremely rich people, and they have all that money. But to go and pair it with Yamamoto, I think, probably exceeded their expectations. If they got Otani, it was like a great winter. If they could get Otani and Yamamoto to go along with Mookie and Freddie and all of the other incredible players that they've got there, and then to add Glasnow in a trade as well, like the... The Dodgers, Pat, won 100 games last year, and they just added the best player in the world, uh, a top 10 pitcher in the world, and a guy who, when he's healthy, is a top 10 pitcher in the world. And, and yet, because it's baseball, I think we need to like keep this in mind. Because it's baseball, this same 100-win Dodgers team from last year 
lost to an 84 win Arizona Diamondbacks team in the playoffs. Oh, and that is the thing that keeps the super team in baseball, I think, from happening. Like we sit here and we're like, oh my God, they, there's so much talent there. Yeah, but it's baseball. And you have a five game series and your chances of winning it, best case scenario, are probably like 60%. It's the best odds you're ever going to get in the series against two. How many two games teams. in a season again? 162 in a season. Then you get to the playoffs and it's five games. Uh, I still think that's part of the problem for not inter- international interest. A lot of games. I, that's a lot of games. It's hard for us to take serious a lot of those games. It's like, well, this doesn't matter. This is literally just a preseason game because they could just yeah. win. They could lose 40 straight games, <laughs> and it does not matter because you could just get into one of those one-game play-in things, win enough, sneak in, and then all of a sudden you're in the playoffs and it's a whole different game. But I do appreciate the fact that it feels like baseball is trying, you know? Like the Dodgers are trying. Oh, yeah. They're like, hey, listen, oh, we're putting stars sure. on, the, on the diamond. We want everybody – Dodgers do well, I assume, ticket-wise, because they acted like Shohei had not been in L.A. for the last six years with the Angels. The Dodgers fill up, I assume, that they're – yeah, they, they pretty close. I mean, they have they have the highest attendance in baseball, like by far every year. It's almost fifty thousand a night. Like they'll they'll go over four million in attendance this year. All right, so I I like this Dodgers team. Yeah, holy hell! I like this. I like what okay. they're doing. Good squad. I like anybody that's trying to win. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I like anybody that's just trying to win, and they clearly are trying their absolute best to win. Hopefully, they're able to do that. The Yankees stink, though. You guys didn't even get Yamamoto like you thought it was going to happen. Are you, are you guys dead? No, 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 no. They still traded for Juan Soto, so they you know they're they're addressing some things. But uh, Jet, obviously, you know, again, I got duped. Okay, and uh, I got I'll, I'll take my medicine today. You know, I have to do that. I feel like a real this, this, it, Ty, Ty, this this insider game is not easy. Uh, hey, I That's understand what happens that, that, when you step into someone else's sandbox. Hey, listen, Jet, I said okay. I tried to, <laughs> you know, I tried to step up to the MLB hot stove, and I got third degree burns. Okay, and I'll remember that for the rest of my life. But <laughs> got community notes. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Got That's com- tough. Exactly. Uh, but kind of a two part question here: Was all the stuff with Yamamoto like? Him being interested in like the Yankees' history and and like you know them bringing in Matsui to for the pitch, him having like a, a relationship with Boone and them scouting him incredibly heavily for quite some time now. Like, was it ultimately that he like it, they, it came out today that like he just really wanted to play with Otani? I didn't realize how close they were. Like, so was all that stuff with the Yankees and their tradition kind of just bullshit? And then now, like, what what do they do moving forward? Is it like a guy like Jordan Montgomery who pitched there a couple years ago and then they traded him? Like, what what do they do? Because I assume they thought they were pretty close up until they realized, hey, we're about twenty five million dollars short here. Yeah, and I. I think it was probably more than the money. I think, it, like, let's look at the Mets as well. They had the same offer as the Dodgers, essentially. And Yamamoto still chose to go to L.A. And I think that Otani has this gravitational pull to him among Japanese players. Like, you, Darvish is seen as sort of the godfather, the senpai. Um, but Otani was the captain of the World Baseball Classic team. And you guys, uh, I remember, Pat, you got into the WBC oh, a little bit yeah. this past spring. Oh, yeah. And, we and, had America versus and, oh, Japan. Yeah. Awesome. Shohei yeah. versus Trout. Mike Trout. The last yeah. out of the entire thing. Yeah. yeah. That was awesome. Yeah, Shohei exactly. Wins, and, American loses. And, and so, sh- I mean, Shohei, uh, it's not that he got to know the Japanese players better. I think that it was the first time that he was playing with them since he had grown into something beyond Japan, because he is like, say what you will about baseball. I think it's pretty fair to call Otani an extremely well-known sports star at this point, not just a baseball player. Like he transcends baseball and that appeals so deeply to Japanese players that you know, you would think Yamamoto, this guy who's super competitive, wants to strike it out on his own, wants to go to New York and take over that city, just like Otani. No, like playing alongside the Godfather, playing alongside the best player anyone has ever seen, has an immense appeal to it. And it's not not just among Japanese players, by the way. I think what's left for the Dodgers is going to be they're going to be able to take their pick of free agents and say, you know what, maybe you're not getting the amount of money that you thought you were on the free agent market. 
But, How about we give you a one or two year deal and you come play alongside Shohei Otani and we go win a ring? Yeah. Uh, and, and that is the advantage of having Otani. And it's why the Yankees, Ty, I'm, I'm not sure where they pivot at this point. Oh, I mean, no. do you, do you want to, do you want, do you want to pay, you know, okay. $160 million for Jordan Montgomery, a oh, guy man. who you traded for Harrison Bader a year and a half ago? Oh, man. Um, right. I like Jordan Montgomery a lot. I think he's fantastic. I just Maybe don't know if a return engagement oh, no. in the Bronx is necessarily the right thing for him. Hey, and how about that fan base, the Yankees fan base? They thought they had Yamamoto last yep. night. Yeah. I was one of them partying in the streets. I, I feel I feel really bad for them. They're, you know, the irresponsibility of some people. It, it's become it's become really apparent during this baseball offseason mm -hmm. that some people fancy themselves knowledgeable or God. insiders, if you will, mm -hmm. and and they put stuff out there without caring about people's minds, their hearts, oh. uh, their, the very fiber of their beings. Whoa. And I think, you know, I think those people, uh, those people, there's one, it's, it's scumbag. That's it. They're yeah. just scumbags. He makes a good point there. You know, boys, Bob Nightingale has been doing this for years. As he jet. <laughs> <laughs> we do like a distraction, throw somebody else under yeah. the bus. We do like that move. Jet, he had three sources. He checked them all. I mean, you called and said, Hey, do I need to retweet this or not? Yeah, so you knew. Like, you knew that what Ty was saying at the time was... Had some validity to it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Nope. I was I talking know. about the Yankees. Like, they, they win a lot. It's not as if this franchise is starving for a ring right now. It's not like you're a Pittsburgh Pirates. Could you imagine you broke the, the Pittsburgh Whoa. Pirates for signing oh. all the motor? We brought back Kutch, so we're good. Yeah, one-year deal, I heard. Yeah. All right, here we come. Con, Con how, many, how many rings have the Red Sox won since the Yankees last made it to the World Series? Uh, I <laughs> Two or two or three, three. I, I, I think I think I think it's uh, I think it's two, but okay. close. Thirteen and eighteen. I wasn't sure if seven. Well, and the Mets kind of became the team in New York, didn't they? Didn't the Mets kind of become the team in New York because Cohen? You said Cohen matched the Dodgers yeah. deal. The Yankees are twenty six million dollars short. Wow. Yeah, but he I didn't want, think about that. that's a swing. Wow. right in that. That's kind of a. He didn't want to go there though because the Mets stink. I understand that that was his thoughts, but like the Mets were willing to do. Hey, yeah. What do you need? Yeah, no, that's the Yankees. Normally. George would have done it. Yeah. That yeah. That's the Yankees normally. Did it with it? Judge? Yeah. I mean, it, yeah, it used to be the Yankees. Ooh. That was that was the Yankees under George Steinbrenner. Yep. Uh, that is that is not how the Yankees operate anymore. And it, listen, it's a different time. But the isn't that where is, all these Yankees fans have come from? The Steinbrenner era, and that where you're all. Yep. I, I mean, mean you're he, born in there, obviously, but I mean, I'm talking about the yeah, brand. No, no, yeah, for sure. And and now his kids running the team, and, and it's a little bit different. But, I mean, what are you going to do? They, they, if they would have lost Judge last year, I think a lot of people would have been like, okay, what's going on here? But they they paid yeah. him what he wanted because he, you know, again, John Heyman said, like, he was right there. Like, everyone thought he was going to San Francisco and to the Giants, and then... That was breaking news right away. Yeah, it yeah. was. And then... Uh, By who? By who? Jet? Jet didn't do that. No, no. Jet, you didn't break that he was going to the Giants last year, did you? No, I was asleep uh, when that happened. Smart. Shout out. Mm -hmm. Ty was awake. Mm -hmm. yeah. Ty was bright-eyed and bushy-tailed last night. Oh, yeah. So you're saying they made moves and people say, okay, you're still invested. But $25 million when you're paying 300 already? Doesn't that feel like... Over, yeah. In New York, too? Like the Doesn't seat? that just feel like, a way, are we going to... I mean, we're right here. You know what I mean? We can find it. We can make it up. Yeah, sure, can't we? Question. You know what I mean? That's a couple of baseball hats. Yeah, yeah jersey hot dog price is a dollar. Yeah. yeah, that's I that was wild to me. And that was the only hold up you there. There was other stuff. Obviously, one of the play was show. Hey, you just said all that. Okay. Yankees are yeah, I, th I think the show thing, I think I think Woo. listen, the Dodgers the Dodgers are a better team than the Yankees. Like a very clearly better team than the Yankees. Sure. Um more uh, money, better team. Ty Oof. Ty, do you think the Yankees that. are gonna be good? Whoa. Less bomb. Uh, I think they'll be better than they were last year. For sure, yeah. So that that doesn't mean good because they were as average as it gets last year. Oh, jeez. Oh no. I mean, I think they clearly still have some deficiencies, which is why you wanted Yamamoto so bad. But I think Juan Soto right. certainly helped. I mean, that's the th like when Judge was hurt last year, they lost, and when he was healthy, they won. So like, if he could stay healthy the whole year, they paid a bunch of money for Odon last year in free agency. He wasn't very good. Cole won the Cy Young. Like they have the pieces in place really? where if they could stay healthy, like yeah, I think I think they can compete for the division. For All sure. right, I want to let you know, Jet. This has been a blast talking baseball, and it was an honor to witness one of our guys get into your world 
and he felt like he was king. You should see how happy mm-hmm. he was. He was so happy. I know. The Yankees were good. Mm. He was a baseball insider. Holy hell, here we go. He's having time. We're about to do White Elephant. It's about to get wild up in here. Mm-hmm. I mean, it was good. Things were, it was great times. Gifts. It was an honor to see I love. I love the Grinch just lurking yep. in the background right there. It's yeah. so appropriate. Yeah, pretty artsy photo there with the 5X zoom. And that basketball was stolen two, three times, actually. Yeah, that's yeah. a great ball. Yeah, <laughs> that, basketball. that basketball was stolen in the White Elephant a lot of times. And, you know, Ty felt like you for a few moments in time. And then you actually were a part of him getting... Yeah. Community noted and ruining it all. Mm-hmm. And learning that the Yankees don't have the guy that he wanted. And also, he was completely wrong in a big way. Yikes. So we're all trying to Got be Got like, 2.7 million views out of it, though. That's not what it's about. That's not what it's about, Jet. That's all it's about, Jet. Yeah, that's pretty much what it's about. No, Jet. No. It's not what, that's the problem no. with you media people. Mm-hmm. You think that's what it's yeah. all about. Feels it like, isn't about that. Feels like he's taking If that's what it was all about, do you know what we would talk about every day? We just saw everybody down. Bingo. Those get views all the time. Hate LeBron. It's not about the views. It's not about the views. <laughs> no. It's about enjoying no. sports. Of and Ty is not enjoying sports right now. At all. Packers kind of no, stink. He's not. Everybody in the Yankees fan base, which he's a part of, hates him. Yep. Mm-hmm. And he was Iowa. training in Tokyo last night, not for good reasons. They were they were they were speaking a different language about him on the platform. Yeah. You know what I mean? It was a lot of characters. It was rough, Jet. It was rough <laughs> out there. I don't know how you do it, but we appreciate the fact that you do, pal. Uh, it was awesome. I'm so happy that it happened too. I'm like, I'm, it warms my heart to watch somebody else be clown himself in the way that Ty Schmidt did. So thank you, Ty, for your service to the community, to the people, and to all the Yankees fans who now despise the very fiber of your being. Thank you, Ty. Thank, thank you, Ty. 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 Whoa! <laughs> Clear for takeoff. Mm-hmm. And departure, ladies and gentlemen, Jet Passing. Thank you, Jet. Merry Christmas, Jet. Happy holidays. You too, boys. All right. Thank you. It's nice to put a bow on that. We re- it's over now. Yeah. yeah, done. I think you just mute so, that tweet and you move on. Go ahead, AJ. You'll be good, Ty. Don't worry about it. I think Ty mm-hmm. took a shot. I appreciate him taking his shot. But Me too. Is this whole contract deferred as well, like Shohei's? No, none of it is. Oh. So he doesn't get the benefits that Shohei got? No. Nope. Yeah, the tax hmm. smart play. By Shohei. You wonder if that fifty million had something to do with that because they had to pay the other team. I don't think oh, he yeah. he doesn't have yeah. the uh, endorsement deals that Shohei does either. But he will because sure. he's with Sho- on Shohei's team, and all of Japan is Dodgers fans. Big, mm-hmm. Not a bad play off the field. I was thinking about that whenever he was like, he wants to play with Senpai. Is that what he, is that is that uh Senpai must be what like Japanese King for or, yeah something like Grandpa. That. I think is what mm-hmm. he said. I, I I tried to learn Japanese Dodge. in the middle of that interview there. That was kind of a cool little part of that whole thing there. But he said like Shohei is you know the guy and in Japan so. They're trying to take over. And who was the team? Go- Goppen, uh, Guppenheim? The, oh, the Guggenheim. Group. The Guggenheim. I guess they got a lot of money, you said. Yeah, apparently. He just talked about it as if they're a crew that just has a shit ton of money. Hey, yeah. 50,000 people a night in that stadium. That's a lot of people. And obviously, L.A., everything comes alongside of that. The parking and mm-hmm. drinks and everything. You could potentially make a lot of money. But taking over all of Japan, smart play, you know, yeah. business-wise. Genius. And if you're Yamamoto, it's like you're going to be seen by your entire home country. What, every game? They're not going yeah, to have probably. a game available everywhere. Not a bad play at all. Senpai, uh, senior, superior, elder. Okay. Okay, Domo. So yep. like Senpai of the family would be the Marigato. grandfather. Okay. Domo. Marigato. No, Domo Rogato, I think it's thank you very much. Yeah. Domo is just like, thanks. Mr. Roboto is? That is a human, I think, that they were thanking okay. in the particular thing. Okay. So not a robot. Domo. No. Ah, there's another word in response that you say with, like, no problem. <laughs> Should have known it. Went to Japan. You know, I did Japan a couple times. Mm-hmm. Well, one time. But a couple of different cities. Mm-hmm. Looked awesome. Look, great time. Great time. The samurai sword guy. You go to Japan, okay? You go to Japan with a group of people that you need to come, ke- come together. Because mm-hmm. their language is nothing like ours. Okay, so you need each other. Like, yeah. you, you are dependent upon each other when you're out there. And it's not like, you know, everybody over there is necessarily as friendly to a group of Americans. You know, America, yeah. there's some. Why? It's good team bonding, team bonding, like doing a ropes course or a trust fall. Bingo. I think just go to Japan and then just, like, Go, go see your troops over there. Yeah. Go, go, uh, go see our military. Say thanks or whatever, and then just go out a couple times because, like, you know, the dumping signs that you don't, the toilet signs, they, it's nothing. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, and I assume the modern technology versus when we went over there, you could probably hold your phone up and it'll like, sure, 
change it into English language or whatever, but it's not like that at all whenever we went over there. So you got to talk to, you learn about a lot about each other. You know, you're coming, you're trying to figure out how to communicate to people that you don't know. And then every once in a while, you'll get like a good response. It's like, here we go. Now we're doing it. It was a blast. I love going over. Cleanest place I've ever been. Mm. People were very nice to us. Now we were told that's not always the case, but they were very nice to me. I, I enjoyed the hell out of myself. And well, the food. You guys are giants though. You had you had, there were multiple offensive linemen, weren't you? Like you guys were probably towered over everybody. So they did call Anthony Casanzo Godzilla in multiple okay. nightclubs that we went into. <laughs> Hell okay? yeah! There was actually glow, uh, the foam glow sticks thing, uh -huh. in this one place we went to, packed nightclub, great times, very clean by the way, very very clean, a little aggressive. Uh, some of the people in there. Sure. Yeah. Like, they're very nice. I think, like, they lose their minds in these nightclubs. Mm -hmm. And then they go, and they're just, like, super... Mm -hmm. not, and then they go in these nightclubs and lose their mind. Right. Love it. But Anthony Costanzo was feeling pretty good. Dan he's 6'7", 335, 345. Huge, huge person. Huge person. Long hair. And uh, in the middle of one of these uh, dance floors, I'd say 50... Japanese people were hitting him with the glow sticks, saying, Godzilla, hitting him. <laughs> and I was up at the bar at a different place looking down, and I was like, is Costanzo in a fight right now? And uh, he was not. He was dancing. He was having the time of his life. So they treated us very, very well. We had a great time in there. But yes, Costanzo was certainly the conversation for most Japanese people that we saw while we were A lot of stopping and looking. And then just like walking yeah. back. <laughs> then we're on the train, you know, and he sits down next to somebody and there's just like a full. Domo? Okay. And then just kind of <laughs> turned back this way. We were the dumb Americans over there, though. Mm -hmm. I was, more specifically. And they were very kind to us. So shout out to Japan. And shout out to the Dodgers kind of mm -hmm. taking over. Yao Ming, right? That happened? With Houston, yeah. yeah. Houston. Bingo. In China. Yeah. Like, you can just take over a country, pretty much. I assume Serbia, pretty big Denver Nuggets fans. Yeah, sure. huge. You know, I would assume that they're pulling hard for the Denver Nuggets. Yeah, Dallas and Slovakia. Same Bingo. Guy. I mean, France now with the Spurs. Yeah, you would assume, like, what Russia felt about the Washington Capitals sure. with that being Ovi's team. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, their sports have the ability to do that, and I think it's a good thing. Bring these people, bring people together. Yeah. For sure. That's what sports do. It's a beautiful thing. Let's talk about a record that might be broken in the Cleveland Browns organization by a kicker. Whoa. Wow. Yeah. Love that. Dustin Hopkins, just six points away, okay, from breaking the all-time points record in the Cleveland Browns career. Jim Brown is the number one. Yeah. Uh, obviously, Jim Brown, absolute legend. I th he passed. Yeah, I believe Rest in peace. Yeah, legend. Have seen him publicly in recent history. Obviously, everybody. Talk, I've never met him, but everybody talks about him in a very glowing light. Dustin Hopkins, what a trade from the Chargers to the Cleveland Browns. He's obviously made a lot of game winners for him. He's been incredibly consistent for him. And his Browns team with a good defense, good special teams. Whenever Joe Flacco got there, we only thought he just has to manage the game pretty much. Now he's also taking over games. What a team. What a story. What a time. And Dustin Hopkins, a couple weeks back, he hit a 55-yarder uh, with like a minute something left to put the Browns up 10. Uh -huh. He duffed it. If you watch the film on that, he he didn't even hit that thing clean. Cool. He kicked the ground before he hit the ball, and it carried 55 yards in Cleveland's win to be good. That's when you know a guy's feeling it. That's when you know a guy's in his own. And what a perfect time for D-Hop to do this with the Cleveland Browns, AJ. Yeah, I think people take great kickers for granted. When, they're on, when you have a great kicker, you definitely people can take them for granted. But also, like, can you explain how tough it is to kick there? Not only on that grass, the swirling winds, you're on the water. Like, that's got to be one of the places where kickers do not want to go and kick. Yeah, Cleveland has been through a lot of kickers because Cleveland sucks to kick in. You know, it's right on the lake, and they talk about lake effect win. It's like, mm -hmm. yeah, that is what they're talking about, and the stadium's open to do it. It's a part of the weapon that is the Cleveland Brown Stadium, especially with Joe Flacco, who has an incredibly strong arm. Other teams can't prepare for that. That's just going to show up on you. You know, that's going to be something you're going to have to deal with, and kickers and punters hate going over there. I mean, I... I think I shanked two punts. Maybe had seven shanks all season. I had two in Cleveland. It was like, I hate this place. Yeah, I am. It's not predictable. It's not easy. Obviously, there's been kickers that have come through there and had to leave. Dustin Hopkins, though, he's battle-tested. He's been around. He's been in multiple teams. Maybe this is the spot that he ends with because he's hot as hell right now. Speaking of, we're about to get off of ESPN. We're about to go on to YouTube and ESPN+. Plus. This last hour is going to be a good one. Yep. We're going to be joined by Chris Long. We're going to be going into the Christmas weekend in a super high spirit waves. We're going to make all of our picks, and we can't wait to get back live on ESPN on Tuesday. AJ, any message for the people watching on ESPN as we go into Christmas weekend? Uh, Merry Christmas. 
Hell yeah. Ty, any final thoughts here as we go off ESPN? Merry Christmas. I'm sorry to all the Yankee fans. I feel terrible as well. No, you're not. That's amazing. I like that little accountability. Have the greatest weekend of all time. We'll see you on Tuesday. Merry Christmas, beautiful people. Boom, we're out. Nail it. Nice. Hey, way to own that. Have you know? to. Way to own that at the end. Have, yeah, have you have to. to apologize to anybody. Really? I think, I mean, he feels very bad. He didn't kill anybody. He didn't hurt anybody. Well, agreed. Agreed. Clearly. Agreed. I agree. But that, that, is the, that is the big thing is like as a Yankees fan, like, I'm in the same boat with all these people. Yeah, know? but you don't live in New York, so like that's there. Yeah, that's true. They, 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 nobody's assuming you're a Yankees fan who doesn't know that your name Ty. Ty Cobb. He, oh, no, he, no. Yeah, him played with the Yankees. But I mean, either either way, it's baseball, like, baseball, 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 baseball guy. Yeah. yeah, I love baseball. Equal with the Packers, probably more so. E- yeah, than even, the Packers. well, the Yankees exactly. have won a lot. You know what I mean? Not that the Packers haven't; they've been successful for a long time. But since your first Yankees fan I've ever hung around, mm-hmm. you fucking love that team. And I don't think a lot of people knew that last night. Probably not. And that's fine. That's fine. But, you know, and then that was the other thing, you know, Jet saying, like, I'm the one who, you know, is, is making them feel so bad and stuff like that. It's like, I mean, come on. We were all in the same boat here. We all wanted it. Okay. We thought it was going to happen. They were right there. They didn't pony up. Clearly, it was never going to happen. They were very far away, you know. Not really. $300 million already. Just got to get to 325 Right there. I, know, I start doing some math. That's like one-twelfth of the deal. Okay. Yeah, I mean, for sure. I don't understand that point either. It's like if you're willing to go up to 300, then at that point it's kind of like, okay, well, we might as well go all in. To, but the Dodgers might have won up. You know what I mean? They yeah. might have been in like well, the, that. That initially is they were all, he the, his agent said he wanted uh, 300. So the Dodgers, the Mets, and the Yankees all went to 300, and then the Dodgers and the Mets both went up to 325. I think when they realized. It was a bidding war with three teams, and the Yankees were like, nope, we're good with, we think 300 is very fair, and we're just going to stay at that. All right, well, we did a lot of baseball today because it was yeah. big news. Yeah, huge. Can't wait to see how Yon Moto throws in the MLB. Oh, has boy. never has never played American baseball. Yeah. Amazing. Right, yeah, has never played. No, how old is he? He's never, it's 25. Okay. He's won three of the Cy Young in Japan three years Did we in see a row. him? He was on the Buffaloes. I remember the yeah. dinosaurs. Yep, mm-hmm. yeah. Who that else? was that was the Korean baseball league oh, that we yeah. yeah. Oh, do we get to watch the Japanese one too or no? No, not never. Really. He he was he played in the World Baseball Classic though. I don't know if we watched any of, of like his games, but Shohei pitched in the finals, right? Yes, full game. Uh, I don't think it was the Closed. full game. I think he was. Yeah, I think he came in at the very end to close the door. That was a fun. That was a fun little run there. Mm-hmm. Us caring about baseball. Oh yeah, sick. That was a good time. Now Edwin Diaz obviously uh, blew his knee out coming off the. The mound, I think. Yes, he did. Missed the entire Mets season. Celebrating. Mm-hmm. So a lot of MLB people aren't exactly thrilled with the World Baseball Classic. Mm-hmm. But I think I loved it. And it sounds like for the Dodgers, congrats on the World Baseball Classic bringing those two together. Yeah. Bringing that team together. Mm-hmm. Creating this Dodgers squad. That I think is going to win the World Series. Look out. Look out. You a Dodgers fan now? I, I might have to be. I mean, I'm thinking I know Kirk's it. not switching. Kirk's still a Reds fan, no Shh. question. But Yeah, he wouldn't, still, even, uh, he wouldn't even pay Shohei the... The respect to saying his name right last night. Yeah. He was pissed. I get how he can, you know, he's got probably people in his ear the whole time. You know, Kirk's a big baseball guy, though. We know that. Yeah, he is. Huge baseball guy. I thought last night, potentially, when they show Shohei, it's like, <laughs> here we go. This guy's on base percentage. Also, yeah. like, they're, you so dialed in on football. Yep. Yeah, I guess. But shoo hoo, itini, like, come on. <laughs> here is what <laughs> Kirk Herbstreit called Shohei Otani last night during Thursday Night Football when they showcased Shohei was in Los Angeles. Seemingly for the first time, even though he's been there for six years. They just showed Shohan or Tony. Tony up on the yeah. Show you a town. That could have been the time. Al Michaels. Yeah. yeah all right. <laughs> Herbie, massive baseball guy. Oh, yeah. He loves it. He's huge. Loves baseball. Huge. <laughs> that was his moment. Mm-hmm. That was his base. Just like love the Yankees. Uh-huh. Yeah. Your moment. Mm-hmm. Plus, Sorry, right, everybody's going to bounce back. That's he right. Everybody's he he's an LA. He's an LA De La Cruz guy. He, he's not a shoe who yeah. oh, Tony. Guy. He knows him because he. You don't take a shot like that on national TV if you. Do, you just you know you just mess up the name. Well, you. I mean, we on our particular program we get names wrong all the time. But Herb Street is normally completely locked yeah, in. Pro. We were at the Christmas party and that clip came through because we were obviously in baseball Twitter last night. Mm-hmm. All of us got dragged into baseball Twitter last night. Yeah. Yep. Baseball people heard her. Heard Herbie loud and clear. Oh, yeah. I sent him a text. Football people don't care, Herbie. Okay. But the baseball people are not necessarily thrilled that you got the name wrong. Heard from people I haven't talked to in decades. 
decade, uh, actual decade, 10 years. Last night was fun night. Thank you for doing that for us, Ty. <laughs> it was fun in, in the time, you know, when I, when I thought he was going to be wearing pinstripes this year. It was it was incredible. All right, let's move along here. We have some league leaders graphics that we're going to go through in this third hour. AJ, wait till you see some of the names are at the top of the NFL. I don't think, like, a lot of people would be able to get a lot of these questions right no. if they were to list who's in the lead. Obviously, being the passing leader, the rushing leader, rushing king, mm, the receiving, yeah. like, these are all big deals, especially whenever it comes to contract negotiation. We'll dive into that in the third hour. We also got Chris Long joining us at the Greenlight Pod. Remember, oh. his show's Twitter account mm -hmm. with the Bill Belichick news like two uh -huh. weeks ago yeah. went huge. The Perth. reason why it went huge is because Chris Long's real fucking deal. Uh -huh. Dog. Multiple time Super Bowl champion. Absolute dog on a football field. Beloved by all of his teammates and legacy. So he knows, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. So that's why the tweet went so big per NBC. I can't wait to chat with him. Yeah, also played in New England. So like has been yeah. in the building. Super Bowl. Super Bowl champ. Oh yeah. Then he goes to Philly. What do they do? They win it the next year against New England. Oh. That's Chris Long Effect, baby. Yep. He'll be joining us on the other side of this break. Be a friend, tell a friend something nice. Because it's a holiday and because it might change their life. Take five. Bye. 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 Hello, beautiful people. And welcome to New York City. When people say New York is different, it is. There's more bumps. There's more trash. It's harder to get around everywhere. I personally love that. to be in New York City, live in Mike Greenberg, Get Up Studio. The final Which four, and they won a game there. That's Second of all, you should have complained about this. You I just made this about it. You just made this about it. I'm done with this. I'm so sick of me. Why are we doing this? What the hell? Well, how is this well, what the we're the doing? Glass. Come on. Here, Here we go. I'm glad, you, I'm glad you're sitting down. I'm glad you're sitting down. No, nope, stand it up now. <laughs> right. This is uh -oh. what Dak's doing right now. Uh -oh. Stephen A. Dak and Cat All doing over. this right here, all in your face. Dak is a top two MVP candidate. Whoa! Oh, Whoa. Stephen A. You're right. He's a top two back. You're right. Tomorrow <laughs> on the Pat McAfee Show. We will be live in New York City on Pier 17 here in the Seaport area, and I will be sitting in this chair right here. <laughs> and in that chair, wow, will be four-time NFL MVP and ayahuasca user Aaron Rodgers. Did that guy actually tear his face? <laughs> oh, <laughs> did he? Man, shit. <laughs> I think the Dolphins' defense has looked much better over like the last three weeks. You maybe kinda... like number one since week eight. Maybe. Yeah, but is that a stat? Yeah, maybe. maybe. So, ooh, 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 we got... In this particular studio, a lot of sports journalism takes place. Real stories are told. Hard-hitting questions are asked. The go of the sports goes as this particular studio goes. And joining me now for an exclusive sit-down interview is a four-time <laughs> NFL MVP, wow. current wow. quarterback of the New York Jets, Aaron Rodgers. Yeah. I have to ask, there is a growing narrative across society even that you did not tear your Achilles. That's how you want to start this whole thing out, huh? Journalism. <laughs> Why do you think people think you didn't tear your Achilles, Mr. Rogers? Well, I'm just trying to do something no one's ever done before. So when that happens, it can't possibly be the reality. So, but I'm, I'm, I'm proud of people, you know? There was a time a few years ago where anybody who had any ideas outside of the mainstream narrative and the normal thought process were called the C word. Now, if we know the history of the word conspiracy. It, oh, that's oh, the scene. Okay. Conspiracy. I, know those. I respect, uh, respect everybody's opinion about it. However, misguided and wrong. <laughs>
knew you were going to love this. Hello, game. Seaport. This is Dan in Bristol. You got me? Check one, two. Whoa. Check one, two. Yeah. Okay. Dan in cool. Bristol. We Dan got gotcha. you. Yeah, check two, him. three. Check two, wow. three. Dan in Bristol. How about Greeny? You got anything to say? Greeny or anything? Oh, I love Greeny. Got to see Greeny back there. You're a good man. Greeny's going to love that you just said that. That's where he sits every morning. Mm -hmm. So I tomorrow he's going to be seat. doing yeah, a Yeah, he's going to sniff the seat when he walks in. Wafting, wafting. You can still smell. Has he, Next has, year we're gonna win. Wow. Dan -o, Dan -o, Dan -o, Dan -o, Dan -o, Dan -o. Yeah, way to go, Dan -o. You, 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 you. Dan, 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 Dan. Check ball, ball game. That was really good. That guy's a quarterback. Damn. Damn, damn, damn. This film like a commercial. That's the end. I've had to say the same lines like 14 times. I'm like an actual actor. Okay. Me and Stephen A. from uh, Aids of the Mist soap opera. What's the What's the soap opera Stephen A.'s in? General Hospital. There. You're not Aids of the Mist, obviously. That's not one. We got a chance to act together. Greeny, New York Times bestseller, got a chance to act with him a little bit. And now I'm doing acting alone. And this is where you got to really showcase your best man. And boy, I've been delivered. What? Whoa. A lot of that. It's going to get a commercial on TV. Sometimes the things that you have no idea are about to happen turn into be great things. The best thing. So just live in the moment. Mm -hmm. Don't try to forecast what the future will be too much because then you're going to find yourself worrying about what it might not be. We have no idea what that is. Nope. In the past, move past it. Yeah. Learn from it, keep it moving, sure. and enjoy the hell out of right now. Because that's what it's all about. Amen. Be a friend, tell a friend something nice that might change your life. Let's go to the phones. Let's go to Dan in Connecticut. Lovely place here on the Five Dano? Energy phone line. What's going on, Dano? Oh, what's up, Pat McAfee? Dan, you are Is too young to listen to this show. I can tell through, I think, well, how old I'm are you? I'm not Dan, I am Owen. Mitch. Mitch. Owen, how old are you? He's so different. I am at eight and a half. Eight and a half. If you're telling us you're half age, you're too young to be listening. That's a record. <laughs> what you... What's on your mind, pal? What do you want to talk about, Owen? Um, I want to talk about how inspiring this show is. Oh, and how Owen. you're inspiring this whole entire world with how you're talking about sports and how you're talking about your life experience. Thank you, Owen. Owen, thank you. Love I you, Owen. Thank you, Owen. Owen. I'm taking oh, And also, fuck Boston. Oh! 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 You're the best. Oh! Owen, you're the best. I will let Owen know. If you're still listening, Owen, kid you're inspiring. Kid. Best kid ever. <laughs> Owen, the way you talk about sports is inspiring. Yes. yes. I, I didn't know eight and a half oh. could do that. Is wow. That, shout out, Owen. Time. That time. Go, yeah. Owen. Hey, Owen. New generation in Connecticut, I guess. He's making me feel good, too, by the way. He's yeah. making me feel yeah. good, making the show feel good. He was talking us up. He was hyping us up, and then boom, yeah. A little, was this Aristotle's brother? A little misdirection from Aristotle's <laughs> yeah. brother. Oh, and an eight and a half there. That was I'd, awesome. I'd say he put his balls on your forehead, but I don't think they dropped yet. So. <laughs> Everybody's got Bryce Young, Will Levis, and Will Anderson uh -huh. above C.J. Stroud, allegedly. We will 1 million percent continue to drive that narrative. Uh -huh. Because with the, what my eyes seen, A.J., and what yeah. you have seen, if C.J. Stroud ends up at the Colts at number four, uh -huh. I'm happy about the future of the Colts all of a sudden. Yep. So this will be the last time we say this. C.J. Stroud is the best quarterback in this draft class. That's right. For sure. We are massive fans of them. And whenever we say whatever we say over the next few months before the draft, we would like it to not be held against us because we know we are a part of the entire system here. Uh -huh. And we need C.J. Stroud and Indy. Have to but, have him. Plus, Absolutely. it's really fun to say Stroud. Yeah. Yeah, and we need him to go down to the fourth pick. <laughs> yeah, right. you think they have to trade up? Because Texans are right there at two, and, you know, those are the two quarterbacks of the future. Well, I'll tell you what, there's an opportunity and a chance for us to move, too. We got a lot of pieces to the sure, puzzle that aren't right. necessarily going to be there in the future, probably. You bundle that with the four overall pick, I think you could maybe move up to one, yeah. and then you get C, 
J. Stride. Hey, why? Let's go. This show stinks, and the fact that you listen, we are very, very thankful for. The all-time leading tackler for the Green Bay Packers. You pink! Damn it! <laughs> Your friend tell a friend something nice could change their life. We walk out! We walk out! Sport! 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 Hello, beautiful people, and welcome back to our winter wonderland, the Thunderdome, on this feel-good Friday, December 22nd, 2023. Hour three of the program starts now! Football! Is going to be happening all the way from last night what? through Christmas on Monday. Hell oh. Come on now. When we're back on Tuesday, we will have a plethora of football to overreact to, brand new stories, and obviously we'll be coming fresh out of some family time, which we can all enjoy the hell out of. That's A.J. Hawk. The Toxic Table is here at Boston Connor and at Ty Schmidt. One half of the hammer, Don. Cowboys Tone Diggs is here. And joining us now, ladies and gentlemen, is the host of the Greenlight Podcast, two-time Super Bowl champion, an absolute stallion of a man. He also hikes mountains yeah. cool. mm -hmm. to provide clean water for people. Uh huh. He's a good dude. Ladies and gentlemen, Chris Long. Yeah. 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 yeah! Fellas, what's up? Hey, man. Thank you for joining us, pal. How's the season been going? You've been crushing it, uh, by the way. We've been watching along. Thank you. You guys as well. How are the new digs? Well, new digs are good. We lost full power uh, in the first hour of the show today. All power went out in the Thunderdome. You know, and then we were on ESPN. I couldn't hear anything, and my microphone didn't work, and the lights were completely out. So things are going fantastic. How about you, Chris? Yeah, how about Good. I mean, I didn't lose power today. I mean, we don't have a generator or anything like that, but I'd figure well, they'd hook you guys up. What the heck? Well, that's a whole nother mm -hmm. that's a whole nother conversation about the amount of money that has been spent on a generator mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. uh, potentially the the time you know in which it's supposed to. Uh, yeah, you yeah, never I know until you. you know. You know, you yeah, never. I hear you, brother. Yeah, I hear yeah, you. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's life. That's business. Yep. Speaking of business, yep. your Twitter account, okay, Greenlight Podcast. Whenever it reiterated what Tommy Curran said of NBC Sports yeah. Boston on his particular show over there. It went huge. The reason why it went huge, I said this in the last hour, is because you're Chris Long. You're two-time yeah. Super Bowl champion, been a New England Patriot. Obviously, legacy, your family, everybody's dogs. You're beloved by everybody. That thing went. You in there, You yeah. take that down. Then you re-clarify. Yeah. Do, do, you, do you understand what we're learning through Ty Schmidt's yep. things last night? It's like news nowadays with how fast it can go, can fucking go. Ty Schmidt was trending in Tokyo, Los Angeles, mm -hmm. and New York last night and got murdered by no everybody surprise. while he was at no, an no office surprise. party, yeah. Christmas party. Yep. Was that a moment for you, that particular tweet and the response and everything about the world, what, how it is right now for us? Yeah, it's so funny. I think it comes down to, and Pat, like, you know this, because you built your, your empire there. I mean, I got a pretty small empire. <laughs> um, it's like five dudes, but, you know, we're all in here that day. Hell and yeah. we're doing a... We're doing a, a a pod, and while the pod goes off, like the the bill rumor breaks, right? And to, to you know, because I want to be authentic and tell people like what it's like to run this business, um, and you know how this is. But like the dude who does socials back there is actually a Boston guy. He's like, we got to get a graphic out, and you know, like it's mid pod, and and we react to the news, and we're saying like, I, I believe in Tom Curran, like that's my guy, and I got no reason to believe the rumor's not true. Um, but like, let's let's give it some time. And you know, he puts a graphic out, and that's my dude. But he puts a graphic out and says breaking, you know. And that's the problem I have with that yeah. that word because breaking to me means that you're breaking news. Number one, we didn't break any news. And if you just put rumor next to it, then you're kind of going along with the JPA footballs and the Dov Climans and the whoever <laughs> of the world. So my my issue was you're like, scratching listen, the like boys that. where they itch yeah. right now. You're yeah. scratching yeah, the like, boys where they itch right now. That's not that's not what we're gonna be known for. I'm not Adam Schefter. That's not what I want to be known for. And number two, like um, if I don't think it's true, I think it's irresponsible. So. You know, not to throw guys under the bus, it was a perfectly understandable issue. I'd never said, hey, don't put breaking on a graphic, but we had a little talk. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because, you know, that's my former coach, and, um, you know, I, I think he deserves the respect on the way out, if it, if he is going on the way out, to not, you know, um, I don't know, like, to, to be the center of the rumor mill for a month. Like, it's possible, certainly, um, and I think he'll coach again. Like, I love the guy, but... 
uh, at this juncture, I'd rather, and it's the same thing with Tomlin. Like last week, my brother Kyle on the show had said, hey, I think it's time for Tomlin to go. And I had said, you know, I could see that, but we talked it out for a while. And I said, you know, this guy deserves a lot of respect. He deserves to be able to finish the season out. He doesn't need people like me firing him a month left in the season. And the aggregators like Blitzburg, oh, yeah. Steelers Depot, you know, all this stuff is like Chris Long wants this guy fired. And so that's the the climate that we're working in today, the clickbait climate, the rumor mill climate, buddy. Um, the 24-hour news cycle climate. You guys know how it is. Oh, buddy. Yeah. And, you know, when you get tossed on, uh, which we I decided for us to do, so it's 100% my fault, but I didn't necessarily expect, like, when you get on ESPN as well, and if it makes it on the internet at all, it's going to, you know, it can do that. Yeah. But the more people yeah. that see your shit, too, the more likely you are to get taken out of context. Because maybe... People that are new to the show hear you say something, mm -hmm. right? And if yeah, we're not, exactly. and we like uh, your show, I listen to you and your brother uh, yeah. and old Cuz. What's Cuz's name? Friend, hilarious. Oh, Doctor Fax, Doctor Fax, and Macon. Yeah, I got a couple of my boys in here. Yeah, too. make we uh, Macon. What a human there. But He's like, a when human. He, yeah, for sure. I mean, he might not be a human. Actually, he might be AI. <laughs> But, uh, well, I yeah, need one of those. Yeah, need time. one yeah. of those, especially in the modern era. But like, we talk shit, you know. Like, hey, yeah. we're talking shit, and then like, people will pull that as like, a, oh, yep, here's matter of fact. Serious. Yeah, it's an interesting dynamic. You guys are doing a great job, though. You fucking need to know that. And like, no, I appreciate. It. Here, here's what I'm learning, Pat. Is like now we're trying to do the YouTube thing, and you know, a lot of times with YouTube audience, like, you'll break a clip off for a single team, and that fan base comes to your show, and they're not like regulars you know what i mean we call them locals they're not locals and you know like i picked the ravens to you know for instance win the division i've been standing on the table for lamar jackson the whole thing i picked the ravens to win the division when it wasn't cool pat yeah and yeah, yeah. you know and, and after the mark andrews uh injury and subsequently the keaton mitchell injury i've been kind of like hey I i'm a little bit worried about the way they're gonna be able to overcome these injuries they they kind of pivoted to more of a speed look you lose Keaton, he's your most explosive guy. Andrews has definitely affected the passing game a little bit. And, you know, for instance, we'll we'll clip something off and Ravens fans think you're hating, you know, because they don't hear the rest of what you're oh, talking about yeah. with your team. So, yeah. so that's oh, a very yeah. real thing in, in this space now. Hey, we just got to deal with it, though. Our shins are built for yeah. it, right? That's kind of what yeah, I yeah. just oh, yeah. kind of realized this time. Now, Ty... <laughs> Yeah, you can have some tough shins, but there were some big baseball bats last night coming oh, yeah. those shins. You threw oh, yourself boy. into it, though. Oh, you yeah. threw yourself into it. You yeah. know what, did that. He do? No, what did he do? Oh, he broke he the do? Yamamoto was signing uh, with the New York Yankees. I guess it's the second biggest free agent of the offseason for the MLB. Jeff passon has been working on this for months. <laughs> yep. And mm. Ty at our office Christmas party last night. Maybe one, two, three. What? Whiskey Cokes Deep. Wide. Heard yeah. some news from some people in the know at the time and said, yeah, hell yeah, I'm a Yankees fan. We got y'all moto. And he let he it eat. He tried to cuck Jeff Passan. You can't do that. Can't do that. And Jeff Passan came on the show today and actually called him a scumbag for yeah. everything that he did. <laughs> he did. But that's that's the world we live in, Chris. That's where we live in. Yeah, I, I appreciate, true. though, it's you true, guys brother. continuing to do your thing because you're Thank obviously you. incredible at football and you have a resume in your voice should matter and should be heard, so we appreciate it. Now, let's talk I about appreciate you, you, Pat. You think yeah. the Ravens are back? Well, come on. I, I've... No. No, I, no. I think the Ravens are... No, I think the Ravens are damn good. Like, I, I think of the NFL this year as, like, there's one class of team and then there's the rest of them. It's San Francisco and the rest of them. So, you know, like, for instance, I think this is going to be a really good test for them coming up, playing on Monday night. How about the NFL being like... Yeah, NBA, we'll take Christmas yep. and we'll give you a Super Bowl preview. And basically, like, because the MVP is now like the Heisman, it changes every couple weeks. And if you have a bad loss like Dak, you're out of it for a week. This game is for the Heisman. Um, it's for the MVP. It's for um, it's it's a Super Bowl preview. If you want to look at it that way, I would take issue with the AFC side of it because I do think it's a little bit more wide open than just like Ravens are a foregone conclusion. I've been standing on the table till my legs are tired about the Kansas City Chiefs. I still think they got that championship DNA. That defense was Spags, as good as any defense in the league. And then I think Josh Allen and the Bills, man, like if they slide in, it's really unimportant uh, how they got there. I think they're the, if not the most dangerous team in the AFC, they're right there. And I, I honestly think they're the team that could match up the best, even with the defensive injuries. Uh, with the Niners. I just think the Niners are a tough matchup, man. So no offense to any other team, including the Eagles or the Cowboys. You know, I'm an Eagles homer, I've been told, but um, I, I don't feel good about any of those matchups. Go ahead, AJ. Yeah, I wanted to talk about the Eagles. I know it's your old squad. You won a Super Bowl with them, but 
what is going on there? We hear I, we hear Kelsey talking with his brother and Jason talk like takes a lot of ownership and accountability. But do you think they can kind of turn this thing around and Jalen can can look like we we are used to seeing what Jalen is like? What's their future look like? Well, AJ, you know how th- this is, man. Like I went on this rant last week about context. I went on Kevin Clark's show, and I think like especially with quarterbacks, you need to take context into account when you when you evaluate these guys. There's like unless your name is Mahomes, Burrow, Allen, or Jackson, you need a certain amount of stuff around you to look like who you are. And um, I think quarterbacks are like most of them are, you know, the most dressed up version of themselves or dressed down, depending on who the scheme uh, author is and, and you know who the people around you are. And I think Shane's a wizard. We've seen that. Oh yeah. I mean, I, I you know he he's tremendous, man. I mean, you you guys got it cooking and a lot of fun to watch. Um, but I think they miss him. And I think like what they're running now is an imitation of that offense. You know, Brian Johnson doing the best he can. But when I watch their passing concepts, you know, I talked about this on the show the other day. It's like it's like three curls and two flats, you know, pretty much every time. And you got Christian McCaffrey calling out plays on Monday Night Football. You know, it, they seem predictable. That I was just awesome. think overall. Yeah. When yeah, it was unless you're like an Eagles fan, you're like, what the hell, Chris? Yeah, <laughs> Nick Bosa is saying guy. there's a blue. Yeah, like Nick Bosa is saying there's a blueprint in the whole thing. I do think they become predictable. Ironically, I think that the side of the ball they could turn it around on uh, is, is offense because you can change these things. Now, when you lose a play caller, it's like somebody with taste. They're looking at a menu. They know what to order. They know how to talk you through the game planning side of it. They know how to talk you through the matchups. I don't think they have that right now, and it's showing with Jalen. There were two third downs at the end of the game the other night. You know, the one where Devontae Smith's coming across the field on a crosser. They actually run some motion, which they never do. Um, They've got him. You know, he doesn't even look his way to take a shot to A.J. Brown. Uh, You know, I didn't like the third down and seven at the end of the game either. Dallas Goddard's right there at the sticks. It just feels like he's not looking the, the right places. But the real issue is the defense, right? Because the backers aren't going to get any faster, more instinctive, uh, slays down. Bradbury's not going to become a man corner overnight. But I think what Matt Patricia can do is keep him out of those matchups, right? I don't have a huge issue with Bradbury on JSN. But if you got single high safety at the end of the game, like in your garden against a touchdown, uh, those are the kind of situations that got you this opportunity. So stay out of those. <laughs> um, but but I think the defense is a little bit slower than it was in years past. And you know when you lost Maddox like two months ago, it's been snowballing ever since then. They're getting guys off the street to play. You know, isn't it fun though that every NFC team like last night the Rams have a like Matthew oh, Stafford. Good. Yeah, they are. I agree. In punt return against the Ravens. You know now who knows what Lamar does with that possession yeah. they could go down kick a field goal win it uh because they kick it from midfield so they probably won as soon as he hit the Bingo. yeah so it would have yeah. whatever the case is but they played the ravens tough and the ravens i think i i still feel very good about we're about to learn a lot about them but all you think about on the mc side is like the niners though can they beat the Niners? we all kind of feel that way don't I, it feels like everybody feels about the niners the way like NFL, all football humans seem to be like. I, I think they're right, too. I mean, you know, because they just have so much speed. Like, for instance, they're about to play the Ravens. The speed that they're going to see, the rushers that they're going to see, I thought that Jack, Jacksonville could not get a rush on those guys. I think that was a big problem early in the game. Lamar, to me, you could make an argument if you go off of, like, pure value to your team, what would they look like without the guy as the MVP? No matter the stats that you see from Purdy or Tua or anybody else, I think like Lamar makes magic happen, but Jacksonville couldn't get a rush. Like how far down the list of uh, San Francisco D D lineman do you have to go until you get to the second best Jags D lineman? (laughs) And, you know, I I think when you look at those backers and the quarterback run game, Greenlaw, uh, Warner, those guys are fast. So a lot of the things you're trying to do is you pivoted to more of a speed operation. And when you play the Ravens, AJ, you know how, how it is watching them. It's like, how do you allocate enough resources? You know, if you're a backer in the middle of the field, you got to play the 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 fake, the quarterback run, the RPO, um, and then they have guys. How do you outside, rush him, Chris? He, hey, Chris, start to cut you yeah, off. How do you rush a look guy like Lamar? That's the problem. Like you, aren't you like the I used to call? They say like mush rush. Don't get past them. Don't try to. Don't create any inverted running lanes. You got to kind of like encompass him, but you can't really go full go and try to get around the edge. He can get the edge though. With his I think you got to you got to rush as a group, right? Like you you have to be cognizant of not getting too high on the quarterback. So nine ten yards is not going to happen. 
uh, and he's a right-handed quarterback, so you want him to to pull away from his ball hand side, right? Like so, I would if if I were a team, I would be trying if I was going to be aggressive to get him to bail out to the backside. Now, as you can see, if you watch him play, like he's still going to make throws on that side of the field. I don't think rushing people scared is the way to go in the NFL. Like D lineman, D line coaches, you know how they say it is guys like the week you play a mobile quarterback, they are puckered up, man. Those assholes are puckered. And, you know, they're afraid to take chances. They're afraid to let you rush. I, I'd like to, you know, I'd like more teams to take their chances, especially like San Francisco. If you have second level guys who can run, take your chances, you know, you know, rush like Chase Young can run down Lamar. And I don't say that lightly, like they have athletes up front. And so take your chances and 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 make him tuck the ball and run and take those hits. But Lamar is so good at at knowing how not to take big hits. He doesn't get enough credit for that. Like he he just knows when to get down and knows how to fall. Like some guys fall well. You know, he's just one of those guys. So make him make him run the football, make him kind of you know, take those hits. We've talked about that in the past about Lamar because obviously the conversation early in his career was, is he going to be able to play like this long term? Uh, is this mm -hmm. sustainable? That was the whole thing. And then there's some guys in the NFL that just know how to not get blown up. Like, I'm going to skirt out of bounds right there. Just got every yard that he needed. All good. We're going to get out. Even when he was tackled from behind there, his fall was like a very light fall, seemingly. Yes, and, the, dude. And, and he's still aggressive runner. You know, he's still look, yeah. down. Yeah. Boom. Like, that is. Yep. Down. Down. Yeah. Not, a, not a big hit. Like, he just knows. And for your guy, Anthony Richardson, who I've been a big fan of, like, oh, I, I actually shared the sentiment with you guys, and you guys knocked it out of the park on Shroud. Like, I thought Shroud and him were the guys, right? Like, different flavors. But. Um, you know, for Anthony Richardson, whenever he comes back, like, dude, you can't be getting knocked out of every game you play in. And I think, you <laughs> know, say. you appreciate his willingness to go, <laughs> to go tuck and run because it is a scary prospect, but save those for the right times, you know, um, or else you kind of end up in the situation that Jalen Hurts is in right now. He's been dinged all year and quarterback run game, is such a big part of what they do. They haven't been able to lean into it the same. Yeah. I got a chance to see T.Y. Hilton, who was an undersized wide yeah. receiver. And when he came in as a rookie, you know, like when he would slide or go out of bounds or just go down after making a catch, there are some people like, he needs to be tougher, doesn't he? And then yeah. you, you see, you see like eight straight years, no injuries, mm -hmm. guy that's undersized, never takes a big hit. It's like, that's a, that's like better. Tyler Lockett. Yeah, Tyler bingo. Lockett's a perfect <laughs> example. He, I mean, he will slide like a quarterback to get down. Like he's not going to get any yak. But Tight, one dude. thing he's going to be is available, my guy. He's going to be on the field, you know? Yeah, that's huge. That's the best ability, they say. Availability, the especially availability, if you're good at football. Say. But I'm pumped yeah. to see Lamar in the Niners, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's going to be a great game. Because Lamar, be Lamar and them, not on primetime a lot. I've seen a lot mm -hmm. of the Niners, obviously, <laughs> both last year and this year. But Lamar Jackson, again, on primetime, I'm very thankful yeah. for that. I'm very, very dude, thankful it, for that. You know what? Like, I was so hyped about the Jets. I I actually like picked him to win the Super Bowl with Aaron and the whole thing, <laughs> and then on. he gets hurt. And you know, like you're saying, come on, because you. I mean, the O line's been bad and that sort of thing. But um, you know, getting to see the Jets in prime time five seven times, oh. like, come on. And then you know, like I actually thought last night it was great to see the Rams. The last time they were in prime time was Cincy, and they looked totally different. I actually wonder what you guys think about this. I think we kind of gloss over that Super Bowl year when you think about great Rams offenses. Um, but 2018, they were historically good, right? I actually think this offense is more functional. You know, I really do. I mean, like, if you look at the number twos, like Woods or Nakua, um, you look at the quarterback. I'm a big Matt Stafford fan. Would you take Stafford and Kyron Williams over Gurley and Goff? Like, I actually think the play action makes it go. It's a different run look this year. But I think the the Rams are better offensively than that group. And, you know, I know that that, that group put up a bunch, bunch of big numbers. Everybody remembers 54, 51, all that stuff. But when it comes to the playoffs, I feel like this is more functional offense. And for the NFC, you know, like they're watching these games on TV, like the Eagles, the Lions, Cowboys. Um, the Cowboys. They don't want to see these guys mm -hmm. visiting their home stadium. Like, I don't know if there's a game where I don't, I don't think the Rams win it. You know, like if if they're traveling to Philly, I, that's a scary one. I'll admit it. I, I don't know if we have enough to keep up right now. Hey. And the same thing hey. with Detroit. Like, you know, it's it's a tough deal. Matt Stafford walking back into his own house now. Yeah. And McVay, who didn't like golf, like being like, I want to prove why. Um, the, the the Rams are scary. And we got to see it last night. Yeah, they were fun to watch. Yeah. One punt return against the Ravens, who we all love and think they're dominant yeah. as well. 
Good luck in Detroit if Matthew Stafford's coming back into town. MCDC's built the culture to sustain that, though. Yeah, I hate the oh, matchup awesome. so much. I hate that matchup so much. He will throw for 500 yards, guaranteed. <laughs> that's a Lions <laughs> fan right there. Yeah, yeah. Hey. yeah but, the cor- but the corners on, on you know, we saw it at the end of the game last night. They've given up a lot of shots over the last couple of weeks, and New Orleans couldn't really take advantage of it in phase. Why like, not? They play some of these teams. Because the corners are, you know, the corners, are, a lot of guys on the back end, they're young. Like, coming into the season. No, but why didn't Derek Carr take advantage of it? Just say it. He's a good guy. I'm not, I'm, he's, no, I mean, I don't think Carr's, I, you know, I'm not trying to make a headline here, but, like, when I when I talked about two echelons of quarterbacks, like, Carr's not in that echelon. So, uh, this you know, stage, I, I this thought stage. that, I thought the short, at this stage, it could change, Pat, you're right. Uh-huh. But, uh, uh-huh. but, but I thought the, I thought the, the <laughs> short yardage stuff killed him. You know, not being able to convert, you know, last night was killer because they were there early in the game and they made some decisions in short yardage, I think, killed them. Dennis Allen, he there was a clip from his press conference that went out there about describing the whole team not getting it done or whatever. All the quote tweets were Saints fans just being like, every week, same shit with this guy. Now, (laughs) a lot of seats are hot around the NFL. Connor has a question. In the NFC South. Yeah, well, (laughs) yeah, no shit. Big time. There's not many coaches that can save any of those teams, Chris. But uh, just going back to what you started off with, first of all, if you're telling me that there's a Boston guy in your camp and he's the one tweeting out (laughs) breaking news, Bill is fired, it feels as though there's an enemy within the Patriots camp. Now, maybe he doesn't (laughs) want Bill Belichick, if that's the case, then that's one one thing but with that situation with bill obviously you know you're they're three and 11 there's not much to look out they've lost seven games by one score but they're still three and 11 so it doesn't really matter uh when it comes to the offseason that de- decision kind of getting made does it ever happen where you know players on the team will go knock on robert Kraft's door and kind of lay out why they want bill there or you know vice versa depending on the situation have you ever heard of that happening and have you ever been on a team where the coach does get fired either mid or end of season and conversations like that do take place with ownership unfortunately i think you know I, well unfortunately I've, I've, been, I've had like seven hey when i was in st louis i felt like i had like five head coaches and you know we lost the mid-season we lost them after the season um you know and the whole thing and and i think players understand um the business part of it because these guys are getting cut like if we don't play well we're getting cut so it's hard for us to have empathy for a coach even if he's the goat yeah. uh but i do think in new england you know i've only been there a year and sometimes i think pats fans get annoyed when i even comment on new england as if i know something that's bullshit i don't know what that De- no i don't know what devin knows i don't know what ninko knows i don't know what those guys all my boys up there jewels but i do know this like robert Kraft's in that building like every day you know he'll walk through that building unlike any owner i ever had and it wasn't a deal where we we're like oh robert's here again like you know, he's a cool dude. People like Robert and he talks to players. And I think whatever it is, they're not going to have to knock on the door. I think he has all the information he needs, but I will say this, if he comes back, I have no problem with bill, the coach. I have a problem with bill, the GM, you know, um, I, I think that, that, that things run its course. And if he gets another job when he does, because I would hire him in a heartbeat, that would be one of my contingencies would be like, Hey, you know, like you, you can't buy the groceries and fix dinner. Yeah, that was an old Bill Bar- Parcells thing, you know, and not many guys have been able to stick the landing on doing both those things. So I think Bill can still coach his ass off. Um, but, but that's going to be tough. Don't is, you think, don't you think that's going to be tough yeah. for Bill? He's won how many Super Bowls Six. doing it as GM? Yeah, he's won Six. a lot. Of, he's won a lot of Super Bowls doing it, but you know, they, they did, they did draft this guy in like the, the 10th round or whatever it was, <laughs> uh, from Michigan. And that helps a lot. You know Six. what I'm saying? And and for, for a lot of years, guys would take discounts to come there. You know, like, not that I was a big part of it, but I took a discount, like a little discount. And then you got other guys that take big, big discounts. And, you know, I, I think um, I think that all factors in. But I, I think Bill loves football too much, man. I, I don't know what else he would do. Like, there's not enough uh, lacrosse games or uh, <laughs> tours of the Navy campus. Or, like, I th- he can't build little wooden ships the rest of his life, like, and hang out with his dog like the guy wants to coach football so if he gets an opportunity i may maybe you'd find one organization that would say hey sure like tom telesco wasn't doing a, a great job here um maybe we'll take bill over tom telesco and run it back but um actually in that particular situation i would hire an offensive coach in la well they're like 45 million over the salary cap yeah. as well i yep. don't know Eckler. they don't have like the the greatest 
setup over there for Bill. Allegedly, Harbaugh potentially going to end up there, but they're probably going to be able to to pick whoever because they have a quarterback, which yeah. is what a lot of people yeah. think is the problem up there in uh, New England. Mac Jones has become yeah. that's become the the Mac Jones story. Almost. And they can shed some they can shed some cash right away, you know, guys, because you've got two positions, especially with aging veterans, right? Like Keenan Allen and Mike Williams. I think the Keenan thing's a no brainer. As great as he's been, and this is an indictment on him, but like, where are we right now? Do him a favor, get him to a contender like Houston would kill for a Keenan Allen, right? Like Kansas City, not that you'd ever trade him in division, would kill for a Keenan Allen next year. I think they've been hurt bad enough that Brett Veach realizes you actually have to give this guy help. Like Khalil Mack is a guy that a contender would love. Joey Bost is a guy that a contender would love. So there's a lot of decisions that you can make right away to get, you know, back in 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 um, in decent cap shape. Go ahead, AJ. Did you ever um, find yourself in the weight room with Bill? Uh, there was a, a ring cam oh, yeah. video that came out. I did not realize Bill was as jacked as he is. Big he old did. barrel chest. The dude was like he could bench, you know, probably, I don't know, 505 dude. for five, yeah, most likely. Like, did you have any idea he was this jacked? Look at the back straps on that guy on that ring camera. <laughs> if it is Bill, that guy, I mean, he's been doing some truck pulls. The guy's incredible. <laughs> Definitely. Um, he used to be in uh, the, 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 he would sit in the corner. He would stand in the corner. He'd walk up like the treadmill. I think he would put it on like incline and just walk and watch film the whole time. So like the guy's in shape. Um, and I, I just love Bill, man. Like, you know, people have this whole idea about Bill. Like he's never funny. He's never a human being, but like Pat, you saw it when awesome. he went on game day. You, me and Stanford Steve were talking. He was just raving about how awesome Bill was and laughing about like watching you watch Bill, like act like a normal human being and just seeing people's eyes light up. And yeah. that's who he can be. And um, I think he's, he's a funny dude. He's a smart dude. And he really cares about his players. Like I didn't play a big role there again, but like, you After did. Yes, you did. We, we keep doing. Well, yeah, I appreciate well, the fact that one of the deflecting. biggest holds in Super Bowl history. Thank you very much. But you know, like I, I, I <laughs> fucking right. I think. Yeah, you know, some people know, but I would say this: like Bill, Bill's one of the. I, I got coaches that that like I don't talk to anymore, and if I hit him up, they'd probably be too cool for school. But Bill like answers every time. I remember one time on our podcast, I talked about the fact that you know you guys remember this. You'd have all the coaches sitting up there in first class to and from games, like these little quality control guys with their feet dangling, not even touching the ground. <laughs> and they get these big 350 pounders sitting three deep in a row and coach. And Bill had the vets in the front. He had the players in the front. And it's little things like that that I appreciate about Bill. Bill sitting back there and coach. He's got six Super Bowls <laughs> and he's sitting back there and coach. And he texted me after I after I talked about it on the show and was like, uh, I was really pleased to hear you liked our travel arrangements. I appreciate you. <laughs> and, you know, like, like that's the bill that a lot of guys know. If you've been through there, like, you know, he's definitely gonna he's gonna hit you hard. He's gonna hit you in front of the whole group. But he hits Tom hard. He hits Jules hard. And you know, guys like that who have been there for a long time, they help him set that standard. And he's very fair and direct. And I appreciate that. I remember when I was in the playoffs, I was an every down guy, and we went out and played Houston. I've never played in the playoffs in my whole life. And AJ, you know how this is. When you try to take a big chance and make a big play, it never goes well. And I tried to swim Dwayne Brown and do some cool like stand up linebacker stuff like I saw Jamie Collins do. And I ended up on public transportation for five yards. And it was like immediately Bill was like, get him out of there. And, you know, it was like, you're a third down guy now. And, you know, like I appreciated as bad as it was that like for the remainder of the playoffs, I knew where I stood. You know, and uh, maybe I didn't want to be in a three technique the whole playoff run, but it was it was helpful to hear that. And I just loved the direct nature of the way he operated. Yeah, I enjoyed getting to know him there at game day. And obviously, Adam Vinatieri and I were around each other a lot for a long period of time. So the stories that he would tell about Belichick and then Julian Edelman has a phenomenal impression. So the stories he tells and then <laughs> so good. Yeah. And then the, the mic'd up stuff that we see yes. in the pirate costume at Randy Moss's Bingo. Halloween party. Mm -hmm. He mm -hmm. put a helmet That's on him. college game day. Unreal. You know, like he is. He's fantastic. He is dedicated and committed his life to football too, more than anybody yeah. else. And like, I think Love that is that, why dude. I'm so appreciative. And afterwards, we got to talk like pretty briefly, you know. And uh, I got to just like, you know, tell him again, like, you're you're a fucking legend. Like, mm -hmm. just let legend. him know, you know. Like, yeah. And we started talking a little bit, and I uh, I said it was really cool to. I was at the tail end of the you, Tom, Peyton. 
you know, Colts yeah. rivalry where we were playing yeah. every single year, seemingly. And it was the biggest game of the year every single time. That was really cool what you guys built. That was a beautiful time. That's where my introduction was. And I was like, my rookie year, that fourth and two, you know. And I was I was talking shit to Bill Belichick yeah. now. Melvin mm-hmm. Bullitt makes a big time, ooh, big play. Mm-hmm. We go down, Reg. That was massive, you know. Mm-hmm. No, nah, that would be the only, like, good time. He goes, fourth and two. I thought you were talking about that fake punt in Indianapolis. <laughs> and I was like, all right. Uh, that was quick. All right, that was really quick. <laughs> yeah, that Remembers everything. It was. It was so. <laughs> yeah. it was, I did not expect like just shit talk immediately back, and I was like, oh, "Yeah, right. oh, he's he's sharp." Dude. Oh he's yeah. Sharp. I was having a time. I was like, "All right, I'm gonna shit talk Bill Belichick here a little bit, just see how this goes." And it was <laughs> immediately <laughs> right back in return. Yeah. I was like, My man, mm-hmm. big pop out of me. I mean, I'm like, "All right, this guy's mm-hmm. awesome." I was so thankful. Yeah, he's a good guy. It'll be interesting to see what happens up there. Can't fire him. And then yeah, after talking sure. to Robert Kraft, you said Robert Kraft's around. That makes sense because like talking to him was very easy. Now, I think as somebody that wasn't around New England much and obviously grew up in Pittsburgh, hates New England, played for the Colts, hates New England. So like you kind of yeah. have a thought about how things go up there. And like when Robert Kraft talks, he talks a little slow, talks a little slow. But what he's saying he is Gold. you need to let, you know, mm-hmm. he was, it was a phenomenal conversation with him as well. That's not an easy spot right now, but I, he'll figure it out. They'll figure it great out. Great ownership, great ownership, man. Who The two jobs that are open right now, who are the owners? You know, it's Spanos yeah. and it's Tepper. And, and you know, Mark like, and, and well, yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah, Mark Davis, but I think that job's locked and loaded. I think that should be AP. Congrats, I, I Antonio. Yeah. yeah, and 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 I think I think you know, is make no mistake about it, it, it affects the attractiveness of a job, and people gloss over it as fans. But like, Ben Johnson had an opportunity at that Carolina mm-hmm. job, and he was like, yeah, I'm not getting on the Titanic. You know, I. I, I think <laughs> Lane. Um, you know, and 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 it's the same thing walking into the charger situation. Like that owner has a reputation for other reasons. You know, you got one guy who doesn't spend money, one guy who meddles. So, I mean, having a great owner is huge. And it's the same thing in Philly with Jeffrey Lurie. Like, if you want to build a culture or the Roonies in, in Pittsburgh, like culture is wow. important. And having the continuity and have the having the ownership that appreciates that is is big time. Speaking of, yeah. Tone has a question for you, Chris. Yeah, Chris, you just yeah. mentioned the Rooney's and culture in Pittsburgh, which is something that, you know, as a Steelers fan, we could hang our hats on for decades and decades. And then the George Pickens comes out this week and, you know, talks about yeah. not blocking because of injury and stuff like that. How do you think the the leaders in the locker room handle that and how can they handle it? And from the outside, it doesn't feel like there's really any leaders on the offense. There's not a lot of vets on the offense. Can can the defensive leaders go on, go over and say something? How's that work? Oh yeah, you can. I mean, like if I'm T.J. Watt, and I, I don't know what that's like, but to, you know, I was a, I was a dude on some of the teams I was on. You know, captain that sort of thing. You know, like I would walk over, and my style's not like, hey man, get your shit together, like all that, because. That's not going to work. You got to connect with people. I think like being a leader is about, you know, being direct and being emotionally intelligent and and knowing where a guy's coming from. And, you know, like I think you got to have those relationships with other uh, the guys on the other side of the ball. So when it's time to go over in the lunchroom and be like, yo, George, like, you know, you got to finish that block. We were fourth and goal and Trubisky fumbled the ball. Like, imagine we don't get in or Deontay, we're playing Cincinnati and the ball's on the ground. It's third and two. You know, it's zero, zero. Like, we need you to do something, you know. And and the thing I loved about George Pickens coming out as a D lineman was he had that fire. Like, you saw him blocking people into the throwing into the, the down markers. Like, everything seemed like, and I know he had a reputation, but he seemed like a guy who loved ball. And, you know, like, to me, when I watch that tape, I worry about, do, do those guys love ball? Because, oh, no. It, you know, you you got a chance here to go to the playoffs and make a run. As as unlikely as it is, th- there should always be a reason to play your ass off. You know, and and for guys that I would caution guys who think you know like they're out of it and there's going to be a new coach in the building. Like who do you think? What tape do you think they're watching? You know, you you think they're you, you don't think they're looking at that tape and seeing like who who plays when the chips are down. Like those are the guys I want in my corner. And so like I'm a big George Pickens fan. Make no mistake about it. I said he's got Hall of Fame talent. And people laughed me off the stage earlier. Steelers Depot was like, "What the hell is he talking about?" Steelers Depot, but uh, in your ass. yes, Steelers. Yes. Steel, no, they're oh, good. They actually aggregate and credit. So I appreciate those fellas at Steelers Depot. But <laughs> the point I'm making is, I'm a fan of these guys, and that's where I'm coming from. It's like I think you can be great, man. Don't let these situations, whether it's Canada or the quarterback, like steal your joy, man. Like go out there and play your ass off. Because there's always something to play for. 
Like and a, that's the culture, right? You know, like bag that's when too, you talk, man. When, like, when you talk about a bag, the, but like you got a culture to uphold. There's guys like Merrill Hodge is watching the game saying the turtle, the you know, denominator, the yeah. turtle's on humping. Every, uh -huh. Yeah, he's you know, not and, happy. And ben Rod he, he, that's that would be enough for me, like knowing that. Hey, uh, Kevin Carter's watching my game in St. Louis, or Kevin Kevin Green, or one of those guys, or, or Grant Winstrom. Um, I, I want to play for those guys are watching, even if we're out of it. And so, like, just you know, like the culture is the most important thing in Pittsburgh. If you don't have that, you got nothing. Hey, to the J, how do you think KG would have felt about George Pickens oh. over there? And that to say, that's yeah, the thing. Like uh, Bill yeah. Cower yesterday. Oh man, Bill Cower yesterday was on the program. He was on the show, and. Uh, he was just like getting pretty to say you don't want to get injured. Like he was he like Bill Cower, you know. And I think he I don't know how long how much you've been around him. He's constant like coach motivation. Mm -hmm. And normally yeah. about the Steelers, he's trying not to cause any problems because he knows his voice carries a lot of weight. But boy, he was not happy about the George Pickett situation. It was it was one of those things that like everybody was like, come on. But to your point, we all think he could be great. So it's like he can be great. Yeah, it just sucks, you know, to kind of watch. Just it all don't unfold. don't let him get you down, George. Man, like every year of your career is not going to be this way. Don't have this on your resume, and it's just one or two plays. These guys can come out this weekend and play their ass off. I think the Steelers win this weekend. I really Ooh, do. I mean, Jake Browning. Yeah, I, I, Jake yeah, Browning. Jake Browning's Jake Browning's awesome, man. Like the the throws he made last week against the Blitz, the shot he took early in that game, a hit chase, and that. You know, like the the overtime throws. I mean, this guy's awesome. He's the quintessential backup that can make it work in today's NFL because he can do the the paint by numbers thing, but he can throw off platform, which I think is a huge thing. And you know, I I hate to sell hope to the hopeless, but like if if you're Cincinnati three weeks ago, I'm like, hey, look at our 17 run. You know, you you got that kind of talent outside. You have good mm -hmm. defensive pieces, the whole thing. But I do think when you look at that first game, and we'll find out if it was just Jake Jake getting his feet wet or not. But the Steelers. They held them to 38 offensive plays. So who's going to be able to run the ball? And who's going to be able to, to control time of possession? I think it's something the Steelers can do again. Oh. And I think they got a shot this weekend. All right. Well, last question before yeah. we let you go. Do the Whites have a shot, you think? <laughs> they got no shot, bro. <laughs> I, I was I was talking to – I went to the Sixers game Friday night with Malcolm Jenkins and my family, and we were enjoying watching Embiid go for 50 and – in, inevitably that came up and we were talking about if we were coaching that team, what kind of defense we would run. And I'm like, I, Will Compton had a great bit where he was like, I don't know, we maybe run like, you know, some new system that nobody's seen. We rush two, we drop, we drop nine, you know, like <laughs> Christian McCaffrey, you got to play corner. That's the position I'm worried about now. It, it's, it, everybody knows the elephant in the room is like, there's not enough kids at Iowa on scholarship <laughs> to field a, an all white an all white defensive backfield. So that's what I'm worried about, Pat, you know? And and I said today, I was like, I was trying to come up with a really good tweet about white football players, but I was a little bit slow. It took me a couple days. Oh! <laughs> speed will be the problem and speed kills matchups. Uh -huh. Yeah, it does. You could does. potentially, you know, we got a lot of pass rushers. Oh, yeah. yeah. Tight ends, pass rushers, offensive linemen. And we got... We got some punters, and you know, Pat. You know, uh, maybe you could come out of retirement. No, no. Um, not no there's, there's a lot better whites white in there punter. now than me. Oh, a lot okay. better whites out get there. Donnie than me. Hecker out there. You know, there's uh, a lot, a lot of good ones out so, there. Thomas Morstead's uh, a good I'm, white. I'm betting the I'm betting the over in that game. Yeah, mm -hmm. from the one side, just just over in general, because I think the 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 offensive whites are going to score, and I think the defensive whites are not going to be able to get a stop. Okay, so this is gonna be a shootout. This is you. You it's referenced this this game earlier, fifty four fifty one. Yeah, you think yeah, this is it's Chiefs gonna be Rams. Miami and Dallas this weekend is is what it might look like if those two offenses are rolling. That's what it looks like. Okay, so is Chris aware of the deal that you struck for yeah. us? Or? Yeah, I don't know if you know this, but I what's the deal? Very early in the process. Yep, big like, deal. Almost immediately after seeing the tweet, I I made an agreement. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. We do not know how the other side feels about set they agreement. Accepted. Too they late. accepted it. Polynesians, Samoans, Usas, Tongans. <laughs> we get Puka. Yeah. We get Puka. Yeah. We get we, we get Ufanga. The, yeah. yeah. Vita Vea. Yeah. Vita Vea. 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 Safety. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't know, though. You know, like, I, I defer in the racial draft. You know, I, I think it <laughs> well, works we that have way one. where we I, get the last yeah. pick or something. We'll do it at the Pro so. Bowl. Yeah. Put our foot down. That's smart. Yeah. That's what the Pro Bowl games will actually be. Exactly. Yeah. What I do Dor think he fixed I think he fixed the Pro Bowl. Yeah, agreed. Yeah, I think so, too. A lot of interest. Sweet. Holy hell. The interest in that game. Yep. Man. 
<laughs> people would try. Oh yeah, hundred percent. I'd watch. I think a lot of I think a lot of people would be cheering a little too hard for their yep. side. Well, that's what happened. <laughs> that's you see, that, that is what it is. all the football people, you know, <laughs> yeah. were trying to turn this into a reasonable mm -hmm. discussion. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. But boy, the people that have America, never been. Though. Yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah, the Bosa's took it on the shins. Boy, yeah. Nick Bosa <laughs> reading this tweet. Yeah. Chomping at the <laughs> I mean, there's a lot of that going on out there. But we just want to let everybody know, football brings everybody uh -huh. together. That's why that discussion does, can man. happen. That's what a football locker it room does. is. It's Can beautiful. We stop, can we stop arguing over everything? I said this on my pod last week. I'm gonna let you let you guys kick me off the show, but no. can we stop arguing about quarterbacks like it's politics? Can we stop arguing over our teams? It's the holiday season. Yep. You know, like nobody died. We're, we're you know, like I watched the game the other night with I had a seven year old son. He stayed up till eleven o'clock with me. Watched the Eagles lose. He's in shambles. The over didn't hit. He knew it. Nobody won in in our household. And uh, and you know, I just think about it. It's it such a special night. You know, keep things in perspective, man. It's the holiday season. We got football every damn day. Can we stop arguing about things and come together? Oh, yeah. Right now. Hold oh, me. Me on three. No, team on three. <laughs> team on me. One, two, three. Team. team. Hell team. yeah. I can say it too, right? Yeah. Uh, well, yeah. you are what? I would hope. <laughs> Ladies and <laughs> gentlemen, Chris Law. Thank you, buddy. Merry Christmas, Chris. Merry Christmas, Chris. Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas guys. The Long family. Love him. Legend. So good at the football. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Kyle was supposed to be a baseball player. Yeah. yeah. Like, I think he was supposed to be a baseball player and then uh, played football, I think, one year at Oregon or whatever. I think he played baseball somewhere else, transferred to Oregon, played like one or two years, top 20 pick. Yeah. yeah just absolute monster of a man. So athletic. Just, oh, I'm big too. Yeah. And he was able to run, throw, shoot, bat, everything. I hung out with him yep. a few times out in Los Angeles. What a legend Kyle was. Now, I got a chance to be around Chris a few times as well. Also a legend. But that whole family, yep. just football folklore. Dogs. You know what I mean? Like just, when Kyle was a free agent there for a bit, he was in the Raiders building. You're like, oh, he's probably going there because Howie yep. oh, yeah. is like Raiders legend or whatever. And obviously, Howie's been on TV for a long time. 30 years, maybe. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Whatever it's been, he's been a part of the NFL story. Shout out to Chris. We appreciate him. I, I did like his take, though, on the whole, like, got a guy from Boston running socials, which I appreciate. We've got a five-dude team over here. We're in the middle of this. You know, maybe the wording. Gump, a lot of pressure during the show yeah. on you, pal. A lot of pressure right. on Gumps. You know, he's the one that uploads <laughs> all the videos live during the show onto X. And what he chooses to caption is really, mm -hmm. you know, how do you want to tell the story? Uh -huh. And we would like to let everybody know that Gumps, myself, Bud. we have an actual plan. Like, we don't need just views, like Jet Passon said. No, mm -hmm. no. Let's not immediately just throw whoever under the bus. Let's give them at least a little bit of a... Uh -huh. uh, a direction on what is actually said in there, but boy, those videos will just get. Oh yeah, yeah. Gotcha. A different one, and it is gone. So the internet's a wild place, but we're lucky to be on it. And Gumpsh, we appreciate you, pal. Thank you, brother. Gumpsh, a lot of pressure. Could you imagine if you would have put like a, like an Indianapolis Colts Shane Steichen fire tweet out while we're filming? Live breaking. Oh yeah, that's a, that's a tough move there. Yeah, that would have been. <laughs> I mean, especially the per NBC. That, that's what got me yeah, riled up. Yeah, breaking and per NBC. Yeah, that's it. Legit. Oh, okay. You heard him run through JPA football. Dove. He probably yeah. said that to his guy. Yeah. Listen, we're not Dove. We're not ML football. No. We're not JPA football. We're not any of these footballs. Not newsbreakers. Mm -hmm. that's, that's what he said. <laughs> just put rumor. Yeah. Yep. yeah. It's a rumor. It's a, that's a funny, that's that's growth though out of a business. Has to happen. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Learning. Speaking of things that have to happen, we have to pick every single yeah. game. Let's go. Now, we were both on the right side last night. Yeah, you were. Mm -hmm. Let's go, boys. Congrats, we, boys. It felt like it was a gimme. Felt like it was too easy. Yeah. But maybe that's just how we're seeing it. Holiday season. Maybe everything's just going to be easy. Maybe Big we're going. going perfect this week. Maybe the Christmas spirit is going to run through our picks and turn out nothing but nice list as opposed to naughty. Yeah. A.J. Bengals, Steelers. Mm. Steelers getting three points at home, taking on Jake Browning in the Cincinnati Bengals. The starting quarterback for your Pittsburgh Steelers is? Mason Rudolph. Out of baby! Christmas Rudolph. season. Yeah. Christmas. That's big. Rudolph, the, the right on QB. QB. Had a very punchable face. But underneath that look was a guy that could maybe cook. Huh? Yeah. Like a 
Like a Kenny Pickett, maybe. Maybe. Yeah. Well, I'm super excited. That's a standalone uh, game on Saturday, so everyone's going to get to see it. Uh, that's always enjoyable when your team is playing super well. Uh, but like he, like Chris just said, they played the Bengals very, very well the week after they fired Matt Cannon. It was the only 400-yard game in the last. <laughs> Boom. See, it's this is what look. I'm saying. It's hard not to think about this. It's yeah. Tough look. yeah. It's hard not to think about this. After the game, they yeah. should make it mandatory that they take off Mason yep. Rudolph's face mask after every game, and he walks around the field like that, no. shaking people's hands. We will say, Mason Rudolph, we do not know you personally. I've never heard you speak, actually. I just know what you've been through, mm -hmm. and I know everything that happened. And I know that not a lot of Steelers fans are necessarily on your side. But, boy, that could all change this weekend. Things have changed, yeah. Things have changed quite a bit. That, that could all change for Mason Rudolph. They were calling for Mason. Uh, no Jamar Chase, so that'll help. Um, no Minka, though, also as well. Ooh. It'll be fun. It'll be fun. Rudolph can rewrite his entire NFL story this weekend. They were chanting, Rudolph, Rudolph. Rudolph. In that same stadium that they were chanting, Fire Canada. Yeah. It's wild. Pittsburgh speaking loudly. And now they get a chance to see how their last chant works out. Who do you like, AJ? So Chris was big on the Steelers here, wasn't he? He yes. said he likes the Steelers to win this game, not only just cover. He, want, he likes them to win. Held the Cincinnati Bengals to 38 plays, I believe, is the stat that he dropped. Yes. Oh, man. Okay. Well, Chris almost sold me, but I like the Bengals here. I really do. I like what Brownie's doing. Old. Is there any uh, injuries on the defensive side of the ball for the Bengals that I don't know about? I don't think so. Mm -hmm. Hendrickson's playing, Hubbard's in, we're good. So. All right, give me the Bengals. All right. I will ride alongside of you because I've seen the Steelers up close and personal last week, <laughs> and I thought they were going to do good, and they did not. You guys oh. got eyes on it. And, uh, and I, it, was, it was just not what you thought it was, and it hasn't gotten better over there. It doesn't seem like no. vibes at all. But maybe one big win over a division rival like the Bengals changes it all in Acrisure. How do we think attendance is going to be? I think pretty good, actually. Because okay. it's night before Christmas Eve. It's on a Saturday. I mean, a lot yeah. of people are home. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's going to be good. Okay. It's going to be a good environment. Let's do that. Buffalo Bills, Los Angeles Chargers, 12 and a half point favorites on the road in LA. How do you see that one going, AJ Hawk? 12 and a half sure seems like a lot, but I trust the Bills and Josh Allen. Give me the Bills. Mm -hmm. Minus me, 12 and a half. Me too. I like the Bills as a wagon. I heard a little doubt there. Well, it is it is an interim coach game, and, and Biff's going to be coaching. So oh, I don't know. Giff. Biff Tannen. Giff Smith. Oh, it's the biggest the Charlotte coach. That's on me. Um, but yeah, I mean, probably, probably Bills. Probably. Don't touch that Chargers team with a 50 foot pole. Yeah, that's kind of how like have it. teams done since losing or giving up 60 plus points? A surprise the Chargers oh, are waving D tackle Sebastian Joseph Day. SJD, who has started 14 games, or said, would be a potential addition for a playoff team. That sounds like they're doing him a favor. Yeah. Yeah, AQ, yep. I believe, put in the uh, group when that came in and said, very good player. Okay, so he's just doing him a favor. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Take care of the guys. That's very right. hey, kind. Look for charge. Yeah. 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 Uh, we get him. Yeah. Lions better pick him up today. Please. Okay, maybe the Lions do make maybe. a play. Maybe a playoff push is, you know, coming for SJD. Uh, so I'll take the Bills as well, minus 12 and a half. Five point favorites on the road against a rookie quarterback. The Green Bay Packers travel to the Carolina Panthers. We think there'll be some Packers fans in the stands because that's what Packers fans do. Mm -hmm. Last week, rainy, miserable COVID game. Nobody in the stands. The Carolina Panthers get a massive dub. Ty, five points. Is that too much? What do you think? I mean, after having to win the last two weeks and then just doing what they did, I, I would imagine, especially after Joe Barry you know, spoke today and or yesterday and, and kind of knows what's at stake, I would like to think that the Packers will win and cover on Christmas Eve. AJ, do you agree with them? I do agree with them. I think they know what's ahead of them. That we, uh -huh. we talked about their schedule. What is it? Panthers, Vikings, Bears. Is that their finals? Yeah. Yep. Final three? Yep. Yeah. They know what's ahead of them. They know they you better take care of business in this one. Those last two weeks are not going to be fun. All right. Give me the Packers as well. I, I like the Packers just because I enjoy Jordan Love's story. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And in my eyes, you know, when you see interim head coach do dance, it's like, what's next week look like? You know, sure. now some have been able to handle it. Are the Carolina Panthers built to handle it? We shall see. I like if they do end the season on some dubs and they make it a real difficult end of the year for Tepper on who he's going to do what and what's the future look like for them. But give me the Packers. Let's go. Seahawks, Titans. Seahawks, three and a half point favorites in Nashville, Tennessee. A.J. Hawk, we see what Drew Locke just did. 
on Monday Night Football. I think Geno's back. Yes, he is. He's playing. Geno back being the starter. But if he ends up tweaking it again, and in warm-ups, he looked good. It was yeah. a groin. Yeah. He was doing a lot of these exercises. He was bouncing a lot. You know, it was like, I thought Geno was maybe going to go. They said, we need you to get healthy. Drew Locke put that shit on, you know, and did his thing. Uh, do you think that momentum carries with Geno Smith coming back into Mike Vrabel's backyard? I think it does. I think it really does. I know Geno even said, like, he was – he was hurt, but he was happy for Drew Locke, the fact that Geno felt like he could have played maybe on this last game. But, yeah, give me Geno. I think he's going to take a few shots deep. He's going to take some shots early and want to make some splash plays. Okay, so three and a half. Who do you like? I like the Seahawks. All right. Tennessee secondary has had a couple tough outings. Give me the Seahawks minus three and a half. I need to stop doing just the Vrabel thought. You know, yeah. at yeah. this point, especially they're alone. Derrick Henry had 20 balls, yeah. bingo, for less than 15 yards, bingo. Historically bad. Yeah. Seattle still, you know, same in deal. It. Yeah, they're in it. Yeah. Seattle Seahawks, give it to me. Cleveland Browns favored in Houston by three. How do you feel about Joe Flacco going to take on C.J. Stroud? Case, oh, Keenum, Keenum, it looks like right now. Yeah, it's two weeks now, the concussion yeah. protocol for C.J. Stroud. Hope he gets better. The face of University of Houston for a while, Case Keenum has a chance to do it again. Do you think he does, A.J.? I love Case Keenum as well, but no, I'm taking the Browns here on the road, minus three. I think they have something going right now. There's some magic in Joe Flacco, and I want to see if he can continue. We have agreed on a lot of these things. Let's go to the next one. The Colts Ooh. and the Falcons. Colts getting two and a half down in Atlanta. What? I know where what? I'm headed. AJ, where are you headed? Give me the Colts on the road. Man, I cannot believe the Colts have to be offended. They're just is this a, is this a mistake? Over the the I'm just going to double check, but it no, might, right. no, it might right. look yeah. like it's wrong, no, but it right. is accurate. That's nuts. What's this mean? What the yeah, what does, fuck so, what does, does this they know? Makes no what sense. do these Honestly, people know? For me, that means the most thing is that they just don't respect the Steelers. Colts beat the shit out of the Steelers. They lose to the Panthers. Oh. And you're telling me they're not going to be favored in – Atlanta after they lose to a team that's won one game this year. That's that's Steelers just took a shot there from the Yeah, match. he would agree, I think. Yeah. No, I think they just don't think the Colts are good. Well, we just beat the shit out of Steelers. What are they saying there? <laughs> well, yeah, I agree with what Connor said. Okay, but. all right. Well, don't you don't need to throw us on it. Colts getting points this time of year. That's Second hottest team in the NFL. Yeah. Come on. Come on. How about the commies? Plus three. Going into MetLife. And this would have been the game, everybody's thinking. Yeah, Tim Kian wasn't happy about it. No, he no. wasn't. But no. there was a chance, you know, if the Jets were still in it, that Aaron Rodgers would have been playing football in this particular game. What an electrifying Christmas Eve that would have been. Cool. Oh, buddy. Walking out. Maybe give him a flag again. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yep. Maybe give him a flag. A Santa got, flag. Yeah. Bingo. Yeah. Bingo. Yeah. Yeah. Well, maybe it's a sack. Oh, or, yeah. Or, red, red sack. What, what if he's on a sleigh and all the linemen are pulling him? Oh, I, yep. Well, they'd get hurt. Yeah. 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 They, 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 whipping him. Yeah. They would not get hurt. He's not whipping them. He's got reins, and he's he's reining them. Yeah, well, same. Okay. No, tomato, not tomato. Same. Not safe. I'm Dasher and Dancer and Prancer and Vixen. Comet and Cupid and Donner and Blitzen. You know, Donner sounds real close to something else with that Pittsburgh accent. Jeffrey? Yeah. Yeah, don't, Donner doesn't deserve that. Donner's a good fucking reindeer. He He's named after Donner yeah. Pass. Who do you got, AJ? Who do you got? <laughs> give, me, give me Washington plus three. Whoa. All right, give me the Jets. Okay. Th that is the first one. I know, yeah. I know. Right, what do you want? We're all seeing the board the same. No, yeah. hey, hey. Yeah. This will happen. Christmas. Why am I doing that? What am I doing? Why not? Because they're fa they must be Both good. They're favorite, so it's not like I mean it's hard to argue. Yeah, with the way. big time. Ah, who cares, bull? All right, give me the Jets. <laughs> yeah, Detroit Lions, Minnesota Vikings. Lions favored by three in Minnesota. AJ, we know the Lions are back on track. Give me the Lions minus three. All right, hell yeah. This kind of sucks this week. We kind of agree on every one of them. Well, it's yeah. an easy well, board this week. They're all going to win. Yeah, you know what? Like we, it's week sixteen. We know the teams that need to go. Yeah, and we know the vibes. Yeah. yeah. And the Lions just watched Stafford. 
Yeah. They don't want that. No way. And no. it's for the NFC North. First yep. time in forever. Oh, Ooh. this is a hat game? Oh, yeah. Oh, big oh shit. Oh, MCDC? Oh, my God. Yes, sir. We're getting, are they going to have a hat big enough for MCDC? You think Probably they're already not. making they're one gonna of those? They're going to get one of those big hats, actually. Oh, big capping. Yep. He's going to be gnawing on big the cap. brim. All right, give me the Lions getting their hats and T-shirts. Nice. Congratulations, NFC North champions. Hell, yeah. That's awesome. Jaguars, Bucks. Bucks favored by three. Trevor Lawrence, though, practicing today, even though he's still questionable in concussion protocol. This is one of the games that Mike Lombardi really liked. He liked the Jaguars taking on the Bucks. Man, so I don't understand that. Trevor Lawrence can practice, but he's still in the protocol? Yeah, I don't know. Part, part of it. We don't know, dude. Trevor can Lawrence, other positions do that? I know there's all different stages. Whatever. It doesn't matter. Give me the Bucks minus three. It does matter because Trevor Lawrence is great. But I hope his health is all right. So Trevor Lawrence is just like a guy who I think just says like, nah, you know, he yeah. doesn't care. I'm he's old school. He's yeah. a mean. Guy. Well, you're still in the concussion protocol. We still need to clear a couple more things. Am I allowed to practice though? Like, there's nobody who's going to hit me. No contact is what you're saying. Yeah, all right, I'm practicing. I like Trevor Lawrence. He feels old school. Yeah, yeah that stat that they mentioned last week. He's just never missed a game in his entire high school, yep. college, NFL career. All right, give me the Jags. I'll take the Jags. Uh, Dallas Cowboys, Miami Dolphins. Mm. Dolphins favored by one at home in Miami on grass. Yes. You're leading to me? Mm hmm. You're saying the Cow Dallas Cowboys defense and the whole team doesn't play well on grass? No, everybody says, everybody says on the road. Yeah. But Lombardi said, it's not on the road, it's on grass, but they're in Buffalo, which is turf. Right. Yeah. But I tell you what, though, that Miami grass, Pat, you know, you get on that Miami grass, you feel fast. You feel great. That is some, that's like you're running on a nice green somewhere the whole game. So I like Dallas here. Give me Dallas plus one. Okay. I've been watching too many hard knocks clips. Give me the Miami Dolphins. <laughs> Hell you know? yeah. And if big Mike McCarthy was uh, on hard knocks, this pick would be the Dallas Cowboys. Yeah, <laughs> that's what I would be doing right now. How do we feel about it, Gumpsh? We're running the ball right now. McDaniel's got it figured out. I think we, uh, I think we got this one. So what was it? He was the run game coordinator uh -huh. back in San Francisco. Yep. And Sl Bobby Slowick. Slowick was the pass game coordinator, who's now the offense coordinator for the Houston Texans. Correct. Back at the Niners, right? Uh huh. And then now Slowick is going to get a head coaching job, probably because of what the Houston Texans offense is doing. Should. And Kyle Shanahan has been able to just kind of continue on yeah. with guys leaving and continuing to go yeah. the coordinator position, right? Mm -hmm. Because we see McDaniel's offense, and we see it throw, 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 throw. And everybody's like going against the run game. They're like, hey, you need to run the ball, you need to run the ball. He was like the run game guy, mm -hmm. right, at San Fran? Yep. Gumpsh? Yes, yes. Yes, sir. How come they weren't running there for a while? I don't know. I think it was – He think about everyone goes from, like, OC to head coach. He went from run game coordinator to head coach. And calling the plays. Like, I think that was a lot in one year. I think he's a little more calmed down this year. And the splits every game are like 50-50 pass and run. All right, give me the Dolphins. I like them. You like Big Mike. I understand it. I can't wait to watch that game. Yeah. We've got some good ones. Hell yeah. Cardinals, Bears, Kyler, Justin Fields. Now, New England Patriots are watching this game closely. Very close. How come, Con Man? If the Cardinals win, that essentially locks in the two-seat or at least takes Arizona. Two pick. Uh, yeah, the two pick, two seed, Jesus. And uh, it kind of takes the Cardinals out of it. There's still an outside chance. Uh, the commies kind of sneak up there because I believe they have four wins. Uh, but this would be a massive Cardinals win. Patriots are top three. Marvin, Caleb, Drake. Okay. So the Patriots are obviously keeping an eye on this, as is the rest of the NFL. Four point favorites at home are the Chicago Bears. You think they got to figure it out against Kyler? I think the Bears do. I think they uh, – I mean, I'm not saying they're a finished product. They haven't figured it out. But I like the Bears in this game, minus four at home. I'm trying to figure out Kyler in Chicago in December. Yeah, cold, windy. I think it's going to be decent, though, isn't it? At least yeah. in the Midwest, it's not it super cold. Yeah, just raining, right? It's supposed to be like 50 or 60 it's or – Something like yeah. that. Monday, I think it's supposed to maybe crack into the. Yeah, is this Su yeah Sunday in uh, Chicago is high of fifty and no rain. Oh wow! Oh, wow. That's wow. a beautiful day. That's really nice. Beautiful beautiful cloudy. What is it at night? Uh, Forty eight's low, so I don't know. Okay, yeah. All right, ZD baby. Lake even... effect. Lake effect, guys. Just gotta keep that in mind. What? Get the lock holder. Easy come, easy go. That's what they say. Wind chill. There's a bit of wind. What uh, is the wind? Fifteen miles. On oh here. shit! <laughs> That's nothing. Nothing. <laughs> Bring the big coat. 15 miles an hour is a lot. <laughs> Shout out to the punter. What's it gusting? 60, 70. Cool. That's a lot. <laughs> Could what? you imagine 60, 70 mile an hour wins? <laughs> Gusts of it. Imagine it happened to down be nowhere. fourth down field goal. 
<laughs> carries the ball out of the stadium. Like <laughs> I was like, it, it was completely calm on third yep, down. Yep. Run the team. It's, it's gone. 25 second play clock. Jogging out there. <laughs> 60 mile an hour gust. Just knocked over. The entire down. All right. Remember Tyler Bass against the Patriots? They tried him in Buffalo when the Patriots ran it. Oh, yes, yes. And Tyler Bass jogged out there. Wasn't really that windy. Yeah. And then, whoo, see ya. Yeah, took it. All right, give me the Cardinals. Plus four. Hell yeah. I saw Kyler run last week. Yeah. James Conner. I mean, they just ran for 200 yards on the Niners. Bears are good, though, right now, aren't they? Yeah, the Bears like, really yeah, good. Right? I'll also add on to losses. the locker room has been super, super with Justin, like, Last couple because they keep talking about Caleb and uh, Drake. Oh yeah, I've heard uh, DJ Moore came out and said something. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. The, the whole defense basically. Oh, the defense also came out and said something. Yes. Okay, they've been watching film, I assume. They know. Yep. Yeah. They felt what Justin Fields has done since what week six? What was it since week what has he really started turning it on? I would say right around that time. Okay, look at the Chicago Bears maybe figuring okay. it out. Yeah. Post bag man. All right, I think they win, but give me the Cardinals. Okay. Uh, now, Christmas Eve evening. This is the one that everybody's jacked up about. Oh, yeah. A nice holiday classic where the Denver Broncos are favored by seven in mile high against Bill Belichick in the New England Patriots. Con man, mm-hmm. how do you feel about the New England Patriots and zip on the ball zappy to take on Russell Wilson and the boys? Yeah, I feel a lot better if that nine guy was suiting up. That would be huge. He's our best player in Christian Gonzalez. Uh, overall, how do I feel like I have going into every other game? Let's keep this thing close. And let's shit the bed, okay? Seven points. Sure, we could cover a seven-point spread. But you know what story I kind of love this year? Russ and Sean Payton coming together, <laughs> you know, becoming one simpatico, if you will, even though he was – You're trying to mush this right now. Yeah, yeah, exactly. No, no, I don't want to win. I'm being dead serious. I've very much enjoyed the one in five Broncos to this, you know, new team now. They need a win to stay in it. It's very, very hard to see a team who is three and 3-11, you know, go into – a team who's competing for the playoffs house, take them down, especially Sean Payton. But in the end, it doesn't matter. The Patriots are going to lose and the Broncos are going to win. Seven points, I have no idea. I don't feel like I did last week with the Chiefs where it felt like they were going to cover. I have no clue. AJ, what do you think? I like the Broncos minus seven. But with that being said, it's one of those games. The, the Patriots could come out and win by 14, or I think the Broncos could win by it would be cool if Judon was playing. Give me, uh, give me the Broncos. Yeah, what's the weather? If it's snowing, then we have a chance to keep it close. Because yeah. Bill would just have an idea, a strategy of some sort. Yeah. Yeah, be able to do it. Uh, it's uh, 31 and sun. Okay. So oh, no. it's perfect for Russ. Russ is going to okay. love it up yeah. there. Yeah. yeah. Mile high, he's been training. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. He's riding all over the oh, place. Oh, well, that's the high for the day. This is at night. Uh, probably in the teens and sun. And night. Well, the sun's not going to be out. Oh, it's okay. Portland Sutton can't yeah. wait. Exactly. Zip on the ball, zappy in the cold. The guy might freeze to death. Bron- <laughs> Broncos favored by seven is who we're all picking. Now, let's go to Christmas. Raiders, Chiefs, old school rivalry in the AFC West. Who do you feel is going to win and how much are they going to win by A.J. Hawk? So I, I like this Raiders team. I like what Chris said. Keep it, you know, you, you found your coach, I believe. But. I like the Chiefs. I think the Chiefs are going to find a way. I don't know what they've been doing. I know um, – who was it that told us, you know, like, we should be impressed when, when we talked to him? Was it yesterday? Like, with how they're able to win in different ways. Bill like, Cowher basically said they're just playing different football, yeah. I think. Yeah, different ways. So, give Andy Reid even more credit, he is saying. I'm not sure. Like, yeah, I get it. I understand that. But give me the Chiefs, minus 10. I will also – I love the Raiders. I'm a big fan, but I'm a believer in uh, mm-hmm. champions. Yeah. Yep. And I'm a believer in Patrick Mahomes, especially after watching that quarterback series last offseason. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. He's a guy. Christmas. Taylor Swift's whole family's probably going to yeah. be there. Travis yeah. Kelsey's whole family's probably going to yeah. be there. They're shaking Hans. Jason yep. plays, you know, the day before, right? No, right after them. Oh, okay. So maybe not Mama Kill. Maybe Donna will be in Philly. Yeah, we'll see. I hope they do get to exchange pleasantries, though. Yeah. About a match made in football heaven. That's right. Amen. Maybe Kelsey even scores a touchdown, too. Maybe. maybe. Boy. That'd be good. Yeah, people are hoping for that. I, I'll go back to the well. I'm going to bet it again. Yeah, I'm going to hit shit. it. Anytime touchdown, Travis Kelsey this week. Whatever. Hey, way to go, Trav. Congrats. Good job, Trav. Good job, Trav. <laughs> I'm proud of you, Trav. Way to bounce back. A lot of a lot of distraction in Travis's life. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Could have broken most people. Sure. Yeah. He's been able to just maintain his professionalism. What's that? I agree. What are you saying? I'm, it, I agree. What are you doing? You Nothing. I, I just said I agree. No, nah, that wasn't your face. You did like a full. I went like uh, this because you said maintain, and it's like. Ooh. 
he's having a good year, not the same as last year, but still. He's I was talking about him as a human. Oh, like, what are you, oh yeah, yeah. What are you even talking He's an Ohio guy. Oh, my hard. bad. Yeah, yeah. Giants versus the Eagles. 13 and a half point favorites at home. Tommy DeVito playing? Ooh, I don't know. Do, do we... What's the word on this? Who's the quarterback we, for the New York football Giants? Do we eat seven fishes on New York? I Jones believe Tommy DeVito is yeah. back. Tommy who? DeVito. Tommy Cutler. Tommy Cutler. You excited, Tommy Bruce? Is Bruce pumped about that? That's a Jones Owen. Um, I'm, I'm pretty worried about Tommy DeVito heading into the link on, on Christmas Day, but hey, it would be legendary if you pull it off, Tommy. A lot of Italians in Philadelphia as well. You know, a lot of Italians, and uh, we've heard from numerous Italians around the country that they bought into the NFL again because of the Tommy DeVito story. Yep. Hell yeah. It was a beautiful one. Yeah. Now we got a little fragmented, you know. Yeah. Yeah, that bit. shelf life out of Lombardi, Chuck Pagano saying, playing good, dude, wait till you play mm-hmm. good defense. And then you got Sean Stellato doing things yeah. that Tony DeVito didn't know, oh, slipping through the cracks. cracks. Oh, boy. And he's going to tell you, it seems like there's a lot right now. It, it does. Doesn't it? it seems like it's a lot. You let yeah. things fall through the crack, you fall through the crack. Boom. That's what Tony DeVito said. Yeah. That's what Tommy DeVito never, Senior said. And they'll never fucking find you. Fall through the cracks <laughs> down into the plumbing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And guess what Tommy DeVito Senior does? Bingo. He's a plumber. Body end up in a mosh. Give me the Philadelphia Eagles, minus 13 and a half. Even though nothing says that they're going to win this game by two scores. Nope. <laughs> I believe their record against the Giants over the last four years is something like 10 and 1. So. But this year's team is vastly different. True. And Jason Kelsey's like, yeah, we're just not playing as good as we should be. It's like, oh, we agree, but we're watching it. But was that the moment in which it changed? Have the Philadelphia Eagles hit the rock bottom. Matt Patricia has a full week now yes. with that defense. And the boys preparing for Tommy DeVito. Mm-hmm. Just saw what Dennis Allen and the Saints were able to do against yeah, him. Now, blueprint. won't watch the film about what Joe Barry did against no, him. No, no, no. They got the mm-hmm. blueprint there. Yep. I think the Eagles win big here. I do believe that the Eagles win big on Christmas Day. Could be a get-right game for their D-line, too. I think Tommy DeVito has been sacked like 55 times in five games. So That'd be a record. Tommy DeVito's tough, though. He he, oh, yeah. Those cutlets are tough. They're not just, you know... Soft cutlet. No, 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 no. Those are extra charred. Yeah. yeah, rolled in prosciutto. Yeah, a lot of prosciutto. I'll bread mm-hmm. it. And capricorn. And mozzarella. Mm-hmm. Now we turn our attention to the Super Bowl preview. Yep. The Baltimore Ravens with Keith Van Noy and the boys. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Travel to Santa Clara to take on numerous MVP candidates in a team that is smoking hot. Six and zero in their last six, but the Ravens can claim the same exact thing. Lamar Jackson's playing at an MVP level yet again. Brand new offense is continuing to find its stride. They got weapons on that field. Mm-hmm. Zay Flowers memeing in the parking lot. Yeah, OBJ's making plays. Yep. <clears throat> Likely's replaced Mark Andrews in a way that I don't think anybody could have expected, including Chris Long. Their defense humps. Hum. They feel disrespected that they're getting five points on the road. Two 11 and three teams. What are we talking about? What are we talking about? AJ, what are you talking about? Who do you think? How do you think? So I, I get I get the Ravens being upset, being offended, going on the road. Five points does seem like a lot. Uh, I don't know if their players get caught up in that stuff. I love that Keith Van Noy is on that graphic. We've been popping up all week. Yeah. Great job, Gertie. I like the Niners here. Give me the Niners. I think that they continue to roll. Boom. Brock Purdy. Here we go, MVP. The Baltimore Ravens can add us into their motivational clips. <laughs> yep. Give me the San Francisco 49ers. That is how I feel. I have felt, and I believe that they're, yeah, they're the team. I'm not the only one. No. Obviously, there's a lot of people that feel this way. That's because we're all watching. We're all seeing, and we're all kind of, but will the Ravens be able to get them off? Hardball, great coach. Great culture. Great program. Mm-hmm. They got dogs all over the place. So the Niners. Yeah. That's like uh, kind of the conversation. And what happens this weekend does not mean it's going to happen down no, the road. Not at all. Not. It's a nice little heat check, a little yeah. temperature check for all parties. And shout out to DoorDash, you know. Merry Christmas from DoorDash. Enjoy $0 delivery fees and reduced service fees on all eligible orders with a Dash Pass membership. Sign up for Dash Pass and get your first month free. Wow. Ooh. AQ did it. Yeah, okay. Really? Smart man. Sign up for your Dash Pass and get your first month nice. free. Shout out to uh, DoorDash. Love you, DoorDash. Neighborhood favorites delivered. Love you, DoorDash. They'll be working. Yep. They'll be working for you no matter where you're at. All right, boys. It's been a fantastic week. I know people got to hit the road, get back to their families. I will see you all on Tuesday. AJ, have a fantastic Christmas over there, pal. You too. Your first one with uh, Lil Mackenzie, right? That's awesome. Yeah, she's she's all dressed up in Christmas stuff today with the wife and uh, mother-in-law. 
they went and did some Christmas. It was nice. I was seeing some photos and it was cute. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> this little baby is awesome. Great. Yeah. This little baby is awesome. All the traveling fellas, safe travels. Enjoy yourselves. Tell your family we're very grateful for them. And tell the people that you get to talk about about how dumb this show is. <laughs> oh, yeah. And how thankful we are that people watch every single day and allow us to go through life alongside of you. Now, I very much understand that there's a lot of opportunities to watch other stuff. I understand that some of the times this particular program is terrible. It is ass. And for Christmas, I ask Santa Claus for a good show every day, but I don't think that's going to happen. <laughs> no. Santa's only got so much time. But the fact that you allow us to be a part of your life, we are eternally grateful for. We hope you have the greatest Christmas of all time. We hope your mindset is in a fashion where you f reflect upon the year that was and understand that maybe it wasn't perfect, but next year is going to be even better. I hope you see your family and friends and you remind them that you love them because you have no idea what's going to happen tomorrow. And I hope Santa Claus does you all very well. Have a good one. You're the greatest. We love the hell out of you. Be a friend. Tell a friend something nice. It might change their life. Merry Christmas. Goodbye.